everyone i am shilpi jain acca and in today's video we shall be talking about a skills level subject of acca which is financial reporting that is the fr paper the endeavor of this video is to make sure that you are familiar with the fr exam the top tips that you require to pass this exam and then we will dive into the actual classroom of fr and study ias 36 in the fr exam you will learn to apply accounting and theoretical frameworks in the preparation of financial statements for the entities including groups which means ek to hoti hai single entity aur ek hoti hai group of entities which is managed by one head parent that is the head company and which has various subsidiaries under the same head organization to so, jab in group of companies ke financial statements ko hum consolidate karte hain to on the basis of what ifr standards do we do that is what we are going to study in the entire curriculum of our fr paper you will also analyze and interpret the financial statements which means that this particular exam that is the fr exam builds on the knowledge and the skills that you have acquired from both your fa paper of the accounting at the knowledge level as well as your little bits of tips and bits from your corporate and business law exam of acca then this particular exam provides progression to the strategic level paper of acca which is strategic business reporting exam at the professional level of acca and to some extent matlab thoda thoda iski relevance aapko sbl or triple a ke exam mein bhi help karegi now let's talk about how to succeed in the fr exam definitely first things first you need to take classes from an approved learning partner of acca and study from the acca study hub don't forget to read the examiner's approach article to begin the subject samjho to sahi ki examiner ko chahiye kya from you when you are starting to study for this particular subject itself उसके बाद रिगार्डलेस आप एग्जामिशन रूप से आ रहे हो या नहीं आ रहे हो प्लीज टेक दी नॉलेज ब्रिज का कोर्स या जिस फाउंडेशन क्लासेस बोलती हूँ इफ यू आर कमिंग इन बाई दी एग्जामिशन रूप वाई बिकॉज हम अपने बेसिक्स को सॉलिडिफाई कर लेंगे रीच आउट टू मी टू डू अ टेस्ट टू हेल्प असेस हाउ रेडी यू आर टू स्टार्ट विद योर एफ आर जर्नी the endeavor of this assessment is not to judge you but to guide you ki kya mujhe aapki weaknesses lag rahi hai and how with the classes with the help of your trainer how we are going to work upon the key areas that you need to be able to work that you need to able to excel in your fr exam to practice and perfect your exam technique you definitely need to refer to the cbe practice platform which replicates the real exam experience and allows you to practice up to date exam standard questions as well believe you me agar aapne practice platform pe practice nahi kara hai blank work space ko nahi dekha hai practice platform ko nahi dekha hai then the exam becomes a real real you know tough cookie but what we want to do is make sure that whatever is required during your preparation phase you are doing it right so that then during the d day during the day of the exam the only thing you need to focus upon is your question set and not the other nitty gritties around the acca fr exam now let's delve into how to tackle the fr exam of acca yes it's entirely based on ifrs it's based on accounting paper hai definitely difficult to hone hi wala hai 
so number crunching along with narrative answers is what you need to you know handle in this exam total up kfr ke exam mein there are going to be three sections all questions are going to be compulsory questions so option koi nahi milne wala hai some questions are going to adopt a scenario or a case study based approach agar main section a ki baat karu to section a mein 15 ऑब्जेक्टिव टेस्ट क्वेश्चंस आने वाले हैं टू मार्क्स इच के सेक्शन बी में थ्री ऑब्जेक्टिव टेस्ट केस क्वेश्चंस आने वाले हैं टेन मार्क्स के ईच ऑफ दीज केसेस इज गोइंग टू हैव फाइव ऑब्जेक्टिव टेस्ट क्वेश्चंस ऑफ टू मार्क्स इच तो सेक्शन ए हो गया हमारा फिफ्टीन इंटू टू थर्टी मार्क्स का सेक्शन बी भी हो गया हमारा टेन इंटू थ्री हा मच थर्टी मार्क्स का so that is how you are going to handle these exams section c is going to have two constructive response questions of 20 marks each ab ye constructive response question ka kya matlab hai section a aur section b ke jo questions hai usme aapko fata fat apni working karni hai aur apna right answer put karna hai bas aapke working ke aapko koi marks nahi milne wale yahan tak ki working karne ke liye अपार्ट फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच पैड आपको कोई मतलब आपको कोई स्प्रेडशीट ऑप्शन नहीं मिलेगी उसमें स्प्रेडशीट ऑप्शन वर्ड प्रोसेसिंग ऑप्शन जो है वो आपके सेक्शन सी के क्वेश्चंस में ओपन होती है व्हाई बिकॉज दीज क्वेश्चंस अंडर सेक्शन सी आर गोइंग टू बी कंस्ट्रक्टिव रिस्पॉन्स क्वेश्चन तो अभी कंस्ट्रक्टिव रिस्पॉन्स क्वेश्चन को क्या करना है ये दे आर गोइंग टू रिक्वायर यू टू पुट डाउन सम नरेटिव आंसर्स along with some numbers that are going to be required. आप कैसे यूज करेंगे अगर हमें कोई भी थ्योरी आंसर लिखना है कोई भी नरेटिव आंसर लिखना है वी विल गो टू दी रिस्पॉन्स ऑप्शन ओपन अप दी वर्ड प्रोसेसिंग रिस्पॉन्स ऑप्शन एंड टाइप इन योर आंसर अगर कोई कैलकुलेशन करनी है तो देन यू आर गोइंग टू ओपन अप योर स्प्रेडशीट ऑप्शन इन दी रिस्पॉन्स ऑप्शन बिकॉज स्प्रेडशीट एक एक्सेल लाइक Mark my words, not Excel, but एक Excel like spreadsheet open करती है which will help you do your formats, do your workings, and definitely this spreadsheet and your workbook is going to be examined, is going to be marked by the examiner. Section A और section B की जो workings है उसके आपको कोई marks नहीं मिलते But अगर section C में आपकी workings clear नहीं है तो भी आपको कोई मार्क्स नहीं मिलेंगे विच मीन्स वर्किंग आर एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट इन योर सेक्शन सी आंसर डेफिनेटली देर इज नो शॉर्टकट टू सक्सेस प्रैक्टिस तो सबसे ज्यादा जरूरी है जस्ट लर्निंग योर टेक्निकल नॉलेज विल नॉट बी इनाफ टू पास योर ए सी सी एग्जाम यू नीड टू मेक योर सेल्फ फेमिलियर विद ऑल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द एग्जाम सॉफ्टवेयर अगर हमको सारे रिसोर्सेस पता है उन सभी रिसोर्सेस पे हमने अच्छे से प्रैक्टिस कर रखी है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी दी प्रूवन रूट टू सक्सेस इन योर ए सी सी एग्जाम एंड दैट इज वॉट वी फोकस हियर इन द क्लास इट सेल्फ तो सिर्फ एक बुकिश नॉलेज नहीं दी जाएगी हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू प्रैक्टिकली डू इट इन द एग्जाम इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी फोकस्ड इन द क्लास इट सेल्फ नो पेन एंड पेपर इज गोइंग टू बी अलाउड इन द क्लास अगर आप फिजिकल क्लास के लिए भी आ रहे हो यू हैव टू हैव टू ब्रिंक डाउन योर लैपटॉप सो दैट फ्रॉम डे वन इट सेल्फ यू आर प्रैक्टिसिंग ऑन द ब्लैक वर्क स्पेस ऑफ द सीबीई प्रैक्टिस प्लेटफॉर्म अब बात करते हैं कि एफ आर का एग्जाम पास करने के लिए टॉप टिप्स क्या है टॉप टिप्स कहां से आने वाली है ऑब्वियसली टॉप टिप्स आएंगी by understanding the mind of the examiner what really does the examiner expect from the candidate agar aap wohi kar rahe ho jo examiner ko chahiye then definitely it becomes much much easier for you to pass your fr exam so here i am sharing some of the top tips to pass the fr exam sabse pehli cheez please practice the right exam technique डे वन से जो आपका ट्रेनर आपको बता रहे हैं प्लीज फॉलो दैट 
you need to understand the format of the exam. It's very important कि आपको पता हो कि section A, section B में किस तरीके के questions आएंगे. Syllabus area कहीं से भी आ सकते हैं. So there is no pick and choose that you are allowed to do in ACC exams. सब कुछ पढ़ना पड़ेगा, सब कुछ detail में पढ़ना पड़ेगा. Section A, section B के questions can be tested from entire curriculum. And believe you me, section A और section B ही game changer बनता है in terms of passing the exam. Make sure that you are able to utilize and you are using all the available resources of ACCA as well as from your learning partner. अब बात करते हैं section A और section B को pass करने के कुछ practical tips की. Definitely like I have already said, pick and choose नहीं चलेगा. Objective test questions are going to be tested from entire syllabus which means सब कुछ पढ़ना है और सारा डिटेल में अच्छी तरीके से पढ़ना है। One thing that you know we've noticed and so has the examining team noticed कि क्वेश्चंस ही कई बार स्टूडेंट्स केयरफुली नहीं पढ़ते हैं। अगर आप क्वेश्चन को केयरफुली नहीं पढ़ रहे हो, अगर आप क्वेश्चन की सारी सब पार्ट की रिक्वायरमेंट्स को नहीं पढ़ रहे हो, तो ऑब्वियसली आप सारा आंसर करे� और उसके लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट यू नो एंड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर एफआर देर इज अ लाइक देर इज अ गाइडेंस फ्रॉम द एग्जामिनिंग टीम कि स्टूडेंट्स कई बारी डेट्स को इग्नोर कर देते हैं हाउ कैन यू इग्नोर डेट्स गाइस यू हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल कि अगर क्वेश्चन में कोई भी डेट्स मेंशन है तो यू हैव टू कंसीडर फुल ईयर की डेप्रीसिएशन लगानी है या सिर्फ 6 मंथ्स की डेप्रीसिएशन चार्ज होगी you cannot ignore the dates given in the question. One more thing, working section A or section B ki mark nahi honne wali hai. So you need not, you know, go overboard in trying to present your workings in a very beautiful manner. Why? Because jo aapka scratch pad aap use karoge, jo aapka working paper aap use karoge section A or section B ne, wo to examiner ke paas jayega hi nahi. So please just make use of the workings only to be able to find out the right answer in section A and section B. Right. So it's clear that workings mark will not be in section A and section B. When you are in section C, for that matter section B case study questions, it's advisable to read the requirement of the scenario first and then read the scenario because then you know the exact which question I have to answer. What is it that you are trying to figure out in the question? Then, section A and section B is a very simple rule. You can follow the rule of elimination, especially for your MCQ based questions. So, if you don't know what the right answer is, but then if you don't know what the right answer is, that in 4 options, this option number C is definitely wrong. So eliminate कर दो उस option को, then you just have to think about कि बाकी तीन options में से कौन सी option correct है, so that just helps you try to get down to the right answer. So yes, you can follow the rule of elimination. एक pro tip देती हूँ यहाँ पे, ACC के exams में there is no negative marking. तो worst case scenario में अगर आपको कुछ नहीं मालूम है कि उस MCQ में क्या करना है, कैसे करना है और आप एक फेयर तुक्काई मार रहे हो एक फेयर फ्लू की ले रहे हो तो यस यू कैन यूज द रूल ऑफ एलिमिनेशन इन ऑर्डर टू बी एबल टू डू दैट अब बात करते हैं सेक्शन सी के क्वेश्चंस की सेक्शन सी में यू आर गोइंग टू बी आस्क टू कंस्ट्रक्टिव रिस्पांस क्वेश्चंस वन ऑफ देम इज गोइंग टू बी बेस्ड ऑन एनालाइज and evaluating financial statements, which means कि एक question जो होगा वो single entity पे होने वाला है, and the other question is definitely going to be for a group of companies which will require consolidating financial statements. तो कितना clear है आपको? आपको पता है कि section C में दो question आने वाले हैं, एक single entity का आएगा, एक consolidation का आएगा. मतलब पूरा क्वेश्चन भी पता होने के बावजूद भी स्टूडेंट्स स्ट्रगल टू क्लियर दी एफआर एग्जाम एंड दैट इस क्लियरली एविडेंट इन द पूर्व पास रेट्स ऑफ एफआर 
सो यस ग्लोबली अगर 50 परसेंट बच्चे ही पास हो रहे हैं एफ का एग्जाम देने पे जबकि वी नो सो मच अबाउट दी क्वेश्चन ऑलरेडी अबाउट दी एग्जाम ऑलरेडी तो डेफिनेटली देर इज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग फोकस ऑन द राइट एग्जाम टेक्निक दैट नीड्स टू बी डन बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली दैट इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू मेक अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ पास एंड अ फेल अब बात करते हैं कि हम सेक्शन सी के क्वेश्चंस को कैसे एड्रेस करने वाले हैं मेक श्योर यू आंसर योर आंसर बेसिकली इज बेस्ड ऑन द सिनेरियो बहुत सिंपल बात बोल रही हूं बट देन अगेन देर आर लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स जो कि इतनी सिंपल सी चीज को भी कंफ्यूज और कॉम्प्लिकेट कर देते हैं अगर आप जेनरिक आंसर लिखोगे यू विल नॉट रिलेट टू दिनारियो डाट इज बीन गिवन टू यू डेफिनेटली यू विल नॉट बी अवॉर्डेड मार्क्स फॉर ACCA FR exam. It's very very simple. ACCA में रोट लर्निंग नहीं चलती है वॉट इज गोइंग टू मेक अ डिफरेंस इज दैट यस यू नीड टू लुक एट कि किस तरीके से मैं गिविन सिनारियो में अपने की कॉन्सेप्ट को अप्लाई करके अपनी नॉलेज को डेमोन्स्ट्रेट कर सकता हूँ एग्जामिनर को देन अगेन सेक्शन सी में वर्किंग हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर Working have to be properly labeled and cross labeled as well. You cannot ignore and let the examiner assume कि ये फिगर कहां से आई है So please make sure that you are following formats. Format में अगर आपने एक चीज कैलकुलेट करी तो उसके साथ लिखो W1. W1 stands for working one. फिर नीचे जाके अपनी Excel, अपनी spreadsheet पे लिखो W1. Show your workings. आपको उसी चीज के मार्क्स मिलने वाले हैं इन योर एफ आर एग्जाम मोस्ट स्टूडेंट्स टेन टू फाइंड एनालिसिस एंड इवेल्युएशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स मोस्ट चैलेंजिंग इन द एफ आर एग्जाम तो अगर ऐसा है तो फ्रॉम डे वन इट्स सेल्फ लेट्स स्टार्ट फोकसिंग ऑन द की एरिया लेट्स स्टार्ट फोकसिंग ऑन द की वीकनेसेस दैट मोस्ट स्टूडेंट्स यू नो फेस एज अ चैलेंज यू विल ऑफन बी रिक्वायर्ड टू कैलकुलेट सर्टन रेशियोज एंड देन सिर्फ कैलकुलेशन से बात नहीं चलेगी एसीसी के एग्जाम में यू विल बी रिक्वायर्ड टू कॉमेंट ऑन द डिफरेंसेज और द मूवमेंट बिटवीन अ प्रायर ईयर तो मतलब ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री कंपेयर इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू or comparison with the competitors was that or maybe comparison with the industry averages also of these ratios you will be required not just to calculate but also comment upon it your analysis must extend beyond generic statements about such ratios and be clearly linked to the scenario तो आप सिर्फ जेनरिक बात मत करो कि इंक्रीज हो गई है डिक्रीज हो गई है रेशियो या सिंपल टेक्स्ट बुक आंसर दो तो भी यू विल नॉट गेट मार्क्स इन योर एफ आर एग्जाम बट यू हैव टू टेल दैट व्हाई दिस इज द की केस एंड व्हाट इंपैक्ट दिस इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज हैज मेड ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर फैक्ट्स एंड फिगर्स अवेलेबल इन द स्पेसिफिक सिनारियो सिंपल बात है कि रेशियोज को कैलकुलेट करो रेशियोज को इंटरप्रेट करो दैट व्हाट डज दिस इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज व्हाट डज दिस इन कंपैरिजन टू द लास्ट ईयर टू द इंडस्ट्री टू द कंपेटिटर व्हाट डज इट बेसिकली यू नो व्हाट वैल्यू डज इट बेसिकली ब्रिंग डाउन टू द टेबल विथ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट प्रिपरेशन क्वेश्चन कैंडिडेट्स यूजली डू बेटर वेन प्रिपेयरिंग अ स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल पोजिशन then when they are required to prepare statement of profit and loss or other such comprehensive income so yes sirf balance sheet pe focus nahi karna hai prior position of financial position pe focus nahi karna hai you need to be able to do all of the other requirements of the question as well and definitely with the classes our endeavor is to give you sufficient practice to be able to pass your fr exam remember standard approaches to workings should be used because i know as an examiner agar usko ye format hai ek balance sheet ek statement of profit and loss banane ka to wo banao na format please use it remember constructive response questions that is section c questions of the fr exam is going to be manually marked by the examiner 
so please give the examining examining team what exactly they are looking for agar mere ko workings cross you know cross referenced nahi hai aur examining team ko dhoondna pad raha hai ki ye figure kahan se aayi hai so definitely you know you will not get full marks for it because your 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 presentation is not following clearly you know clearly referenced and cross referenced material so please guys it's very simple but then yes you must use that also in my last leg i'm just going to very quickly talk about some of the important resources over and above obviously you know your class content that you need to reach out to so technical articles hai examiners reports hai practice platform hai past exam library hai all of this your trainer is going to guide you i am there to support you how to navigate through all of these resources to be able to pass your fr exam i think i've spoken a lot about the top tips about the fr exam and now it's time to delve into the fr classroom and study is 36 with our acc trainer for fr miss vidhi kapoor so over to you vidhi thank you hi everyone welcome to the wall street school uh in last session we have covered about ies 16 and uh, do you guys have any doubt at the first place online or offline students no did you no, get sorry no. for study how i'll clear it once i actually share the questions in the group itself for i think because some of you might not have access to the study hub so for those of you who haven't in next week class we'll be discussing about study hub questions so uh just give please long me a moment i'll just share my screen and before we start with an, another accounting standard yes so before we start with another accounting standard i'll just tell you how do we even have to access the questions on the study hub itself okay once you get registered with acca um you will get access to your study hub only when you are registered at the first place secondly you will get your details for my acc account after 5 to 6 working days and then what you have to do is you have to go to my qualification section under your my acc account under that you will find acc study hub so there are two resources actually three i think you see three resources for acc there are two learning providers that are bpp and kaplan and uh, in class we'll be following kaplan study text itself and we'll be doing the question from the kaplan exam kit other than that for your practice work what you need to do is whenever we are done with an accounting standard like in yesterday's session we were done with ies 16 so what you need to make sure is during the week you will be practicing from the study hub itself and you need to assign financial reporting as your subject and uh, for exam september 2024 to june 2025 and you will get the latest questions once you assign it you will see topic wise discussion or the areas will be given given to you so if you want you can either refer to study hub or you can refer to kaplan study text whichever way is convenient for you both of them has equal amount of information it's not like uh, there will be anything additional that you are going to study one or two things may differ but at the same time these are two good resources for you to refer and these are in very sim simple languages if there is anything that you don't understand then only i would suggest that just take a snip of it and share it with me on whatsapp post class reason being if you do not um, share it then and there itself you will just pile up your doubts and at the end of the day you will forget it so if there is anything any doubts that you face regard regardless of the fact you are practicing any question or it is related to study hub i would suggest just drop a text to me on whatsapp share the question with me if uh, during the week it would be possible i'll just uh, call you then and explain your doubt to you or i'll take that 
up in the next class if I feel that the question needs to be discussed with the entire class. Okay, whichever the case is, I'll inform that to you. So from now onwards, uh, let's say if you are studying from the study te text itself, for those of you who do not have access to Kaplan's study text, you can just text me. I'll share that with you. For those of you who have, what you need to do is once we are done with any of the accounting standard, first work that you need to do is revise the notes that were done in the class. That means there will be around five to 10 questions that would be there or different cases that we would have discussed in the class. So you need to go through that. Once you have revised that, next your work should be, you will be going through the Kaplan study text. Post that, you need to practice questions. In yesterday's class, we did discuss about the exam kit and there were around five questions in the kit for the exam. Uh, you might not be aware about what the exam kit or the study text is. Basically, in uh, in ACCA, we have two books. One includes the concept and one is for the practice material. So for the concept, what you have to do is whenever there is any concept that is discussed in the class, uh, once we are done with that particular concept, I'll ask you to read the book material. Post that, I think Keshav has that book as well. So this is the study text that you have that you need to go through. That once done with that, you need to practice questions from the exam kit. Exam kit is basically the practice material of ACCA. Okay. The next thing that I am telling you is once you are registered with ACCA, you will get access to your My ACCA and CBE practice platform. For now, we'll just be using ACCA Study Hub. Reason being, CBE practice platform will only be used once you are done with the entire syllabus. Okay. And if there's any topic that we complete and I want you to practice from the practice platform, I'll let you know in advance itself. Okay. So from now onwards, once done with, uh, since we are already done with IA 16, either you can do your readings from here or from the study text, whichever way is convenient for you. And here they have given topic wise discussion. Okay. Now what you need to do is once you are done revising the notes, once you are done reading the study text, then you have to go back to the study hub quiz section. And here you will see, I think there was, yeah, it was chapter seven. seven. Yes. Chapter seven, there are five questions that we have in here. I just look. So what you need to do is you need to start the quiz. You need to practice the questions and it will also know the time that you have taken in attempted in attempting the question. Let's say you selected option A as the answer and you have done confirm. Once you submit all the answers, you will yeah. get your sorry once you submit your quiz that means uh these are five questions once you submit that you'll get all your all the answers and how much time you have spent in a particular question so this is how it will be actually tested in your real exam as well which is why it is important that you practice on the study hub so this is a dummy platform so that uh, whenever you see a question in the real exam you are familiar with how things are tested which is why you need to make sure that you are going through these study tables. Okay. BPP then BPP kit, once you are done with the exam kit of Kaplan, if you want to, then only. And more or less the questions would be same only. If you want to. Other than that, you also have an option to practice questions. Um, once you are done with the quizzes, you can also practice questions here. It is chapter seven. So there are seven questions in here also. So um, you will just have a question. And these are the kind of questions that are tested in section A. In section A, you will have MCQ type of question or like C. There they have given a drop down option. And whichever the, uh, whichever the correct answer is, let's say this is the correct answer. I'll just choose it and confirm it. OK, if my answer is wrong, it will tell me what should be the right answer and how it is actually calculated. Every information you'll get there, and even the journal entries, they have given it for your reference. Okay, so make sure in total seven and five, there are 12 questions that you need to practice from the study hub, and you have an entire week to do so. Next week, we are going to have an assessment for your IES 60. So whenever we are done with any of the accounting standard in class, we'll make sure that we have at least one assessment. It would not be more than 30 minutes. 
that is also the maximum time that I'm telling you. And I'll only be testing your section A questions. Okay. That would be MCQ type of questions and not any case study that will be tested in the class. Why will we do this? Because we need to make sure whatever standard we are studying in the class is done thoroughly and you are able to remember it also. Okay. So is it clear up till here what you need to do throughout the week? Okay. So from now onwards, we will be starting with another accounting standard that is IES 36 impairment. Okay. Once we start with this standard, um, once whenever we are done with this, again, we'll be following the same strategy. That means you need to go through your study text and your exam kit. Exam kit, I'll be solving it in the class with you guys. But in yesterday's class, one thing that I observed was uh, when I was discussing exam kit, since because you all have not attempted it, I um, was giving you time to either solve one question, 10 minutes or something like that. So uh, what I think is what we can actually do, uh, most probably, because this is not a very big IES, if we complete the standard today itself, so I'll ask you guys to attempt. There are only four to five questions from the exam kit to attempt it throughout the week so that whenever we discuss um, the questions from the exam kit, you already have practiced it. So what do you think? Is it a better way or do you want to take time in class to solve that question? Okay. So in that case, I'll give you time to actually solve the questions. And then in next class, we'll discuss the exam kit and wind up the standard. Okay. So on Saturday or Sunday, either of the, either of the days, we can have a 30 minutes test from IES, IES 16. And um, for IES 36, I'll give you some time. And then whenever we are, whenever I'll let you know, maybe it won't be next week, another week, we will have another assessment for IES 16 and 36. So from now onwards, whatever concepts we are studying, if we have done with one standard, we'll just, just test one standard. Whenever we are done with more standards, whatever we have done so far, everything will be tested so that you are regularly revising your concepts. Okay. Is it okay for you all? And for those of you who, uh, who haven't actually studied IES 16 till now, I suggest you guys to go through the recordings. I have shared the notes in the group itself. And uh, it would be better for financial reporting that you make notes in class. Reason being, whatever I am scribbling, I'll not save it because I want you guys to write everything in the class itself. OK? And you need to maintain proper records of these so that in future you have uh, whenever you have to revise a particular standard you have all the notes and cases that we have, that we have done in class so far okay is it clear mm -hmm. moving on we'll just start with the accounting standard 36 that is impairment so i'll just write the notes for you guys and you can just note it down for now and then i'll explain it together
Are you all done writing? Can I scroll it down? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Let's In the first point, it's supposed we get limit or hint of impairment. Hint, H-I-N-T, hint of impairment. Let me know whenever you have done. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Is there anyone who? Online students, can you also confirm whenever you are done writing? Yeah. OK. One note account. So OK. Thanks, sir. Ask me right now.
No, but still, this is a little rough. You will write in the But better. done okay so for those of you who have actually studied this term impairment you might be familiar with this concept impairment is what do we mean by impairment uh till now in is 16 we have studied one term that was depreciation Dep whenever we use an asset the value of that particular asset falls right why because of the wear and tear but sometimes the value falls suddenly that it because of a damage that may happen or anything that is impairment okay so if we have to know about the difference between depreciation and impairment it is under depreciation, we actually purchase an asset. And because of the use of that asset, we are charging depreciation on the same based on its useful life. Here, what do we mean by useful life of the asset? Let's say um, we have taken a laptop, or we have purchased a laptop, and that will be used for another 10 years. So for 10 years, we'll be depreciating the asset based on that useful life, right? But under impairment, what does it happen? Under impairment, the value of the asset suddenly falls. It may be because of a damage or maybe because of some change in the industry. Whenever there is any hint, then only we do impairment testing. Okay. So I'll just explain the concept in Hindi also now. So basically, we have two things here. Depreciation क्या होगा? Depreciation का मतलब हमारा हो जाता है कि जो भी हमारे asset होगा, उसकी हम लोग useful life के basis पे uh, depreciation को आज तक charge करते आ रहे थे. So let's say if there is any asset जिसकी useful life ten years है, तो हम लोग ten years में उस asset की cost को divide कर देंगे, क्योंकि जो भी wear and tear का या जो भी हमारा expenses during the year लग रहे हैं, and उसको हम लोग PNL के अंदर charge करते थे. But impairment में क्या होता है? कभी-कभार हमारे कुछ assets ऐसे होते हैं जिसकी वैल्यू एकदम सडनली से गिर जाती है चाहे फिर लेट्स से कार थी उसका एक्सीडेंट हो गया अब एक्सीडेंट होने की वजह से ऑब्वियस है कि गाड़ी का वैल्यू जो है जो पहले थी वो अब नहीं होगी देयर विल बी सम चेंज दैट दैट इज गोइंग टू हैपन जब भी आपको कोई भी ऐसा इंडिकेटर दिखता है कि हां जो हमारे एसेट की वैल्यू थी उससे वो गिर गई है दैट इज इंपेयर Okay, so whenever there is any sudden fall in the value, it will be impairment. But whenever we are charging it, any we are doing any systematic allocation during the year, that means over the useful life, then it is depreciation. Okay, we'll not do impairment directly. That means if there's nothing that has happened during the year, it is not mandatory that we do impairment testing what do we mean by impairment testing impairment testing means that we will be checking that the value of my whatever asset is, it is that the value of the asset has fallen down or not right so we will not do impairment testing directly whenever there is any indicator then only i'll be doing in impairment testing but there are also some assets for which we have to do impairment testing uh, every year we'll be studying that in today's session itself so for now we never do impairment testing directly for any of the asset. First, we need to get any indicator of the same. What do we mean by indicator or a hint of impairment? Let's say, let's take an example of an accident that happened. So that means the, there is a possibility that the value of my car would have fallen down, right? So in that case, it is a hint of impairment. Now what I'll do is I'll do impairment testing. That means I'll be checking that actually whatever in the books of account, whatever amount that I have recorded as in my assets, has the amount changed or not? That's what you have to tell. If it has, then in that case, you need to charge impairment in the books of account. If there's no change in the value, then whatever way we were continuing, we'll continue with that itself. Okay, is it clear? 
तो जब भी आप लोगों को कोई भी हिंट दिख रहा है फर्स्टली यू नीड टू मेक श्योर इज देर इज एनी हिंट तभी हम लोग इंपेरमेंट टेस्ट करेंगे अदरवाइज हमें करने की जरूरत है ही नहीं है ठीक है अगर हमें जैसे भी कोई हिंट देखेगा तो हम लोग क्या करने लग जाएंगे इंपेयरमेंट टेस्ट करके ये देखेंगे कि क्या एक्चुअल में इंपेयरमेंट हुई है या फिर नहीं हुई है अब जब हम लोग इंपेयरमेंट टेस्ट करेंगे सो यू विल गेट रिजल्ट यू विल गेट सम वैल्यूज जिसके बेसिस पे आपको पता लगेगा कि आपकी इंपेयरमेंट हुई है उस एसेट की या नहीं हुई है ठीक है अब इंपेयरमेंट होने का मतलब ये है लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ओवर यो दैट इन माई बुक्स आई हैव रिकॉर्डेड एन एसेट लेट्स वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट कार so after depreciation and everything when i purchased my car was for 12 lakh and during the year let's take an example that i charged depreciation of 50000 that means the net book value or the carrying value of my asset is 11 lakh 50000 right this is something that is going to appear in my balance sheet sofp and 50000 depreciation is going to be charged in my profit and loss sopl right but now during the year there was an accident and because of that accident firstly i got that hint that there's a possibility because of an accident the value of my car would have decreased right and there is a sudden fall because of an event that has happened so that means there's a hint of impairment i need to do the impairment testing after testing i got to know that the value of my car is 8 lakhs in the books of accounts what is the value that i have recorded 11 lakh 50000 like but now the value of my car is just 8 lakhs so now the value has fallen down right due to a particular event and not because we are following revaluation model there was a particular indicator there was a damage to an asset because of an accident that is why the value of the that particular asset has fallen down so that means by what value has the asset fallen down 3 lakh 50000 right so whenever we are doing an impairment testing we will get to know whether there is an actual impairment that has happened or not so here since the value has fallen down that means there is an impairment that happened just because of the accident the value of the car has fallen down right yes 3 lakh 50000 to the value ja rahi hai agar suppose par hona bahut kam amount se jata to decide kaise karenge ye impairment hai nahi hai अगर बहुत कम अमाउंट से जा रही है तो इम्पेयरमेंट के लिए यार अगर कोई भी हिंट आपको मिल रहा है ठीक है एंड यू डू द टेस्टिंग और वैल्यू चाहे कम अमाउंट से भी कम हो रही है तब भी वो इम्पेयरमेंट ही मानी चाहिए इलेवन ट्वेंटी फाइव भी हो जाती है लेकिन एक्सीडेंट हुआ था कोई हिंट मिला था और वैल्यू फॉल हुई है तो हम लोग इम्पेयरमेंट बताते हैं ठीक है हाँ की ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड भी इवन इफ द अमाउंट ऑफ इम्पेयरमेंट इज स्मॉल there was an event that happened because of which the amount has fallen down we'll take it to impairment itself okay so now the value has fallen down that is why it is clear that we have got the results that impairment has happened there is also a possibility that the amount remains same only then in that case no impairment has happened but it is important as per the accounting standard that we do impairment testing whenever there is any indicator of impairment so there can be two kinds of indicator one is internal and one is external internal means that there was any circumstance that happened in our organization or related to us because of which there is a possibility that the value of my asset has fallen down so in first instance the value of an asset has fallen down due to damage to an asset let's say let's take an example of accident here so if there is is an asset that i own i own uh, in companies we do own some cars and uh, there was an accident due to which the value of that particular car has fallen down so that is an internal factor that means there is no market condition attached to it right that means it is an internal indicator in exams you will never be asked to bifurcate between an internal or external indicator ever it's just for your understanding sake i am explaining that to you okay next it can be change in the use of an asset whenever we are changing the use of an asset it is also a possibility that there is some impairment 
that may be there because of which we have decided to change the use of that particular asset. Whenever we purchase an asset, because we are actually investing a huge amount in something, that is why it is known as an asset that it is going to give us some benefit for more than one accounting period. Right. So if I change the use of that particular asset, that is also one of the indicator that the asset might not be fetching me the, the economic benefit that it was supposed to, which is why it can be an indicator that we need to do impairment testing over here to check whether the value has suddenly fallen down due to which the company is thinking that we may change the use of that asset. Okay. So whenever in any case study or a question, they ask you that the company is deciding to change the change the use of an asset. So there's a possibility that we may have to do impairment testing, the reason being, because if they are trying to change the, uh, the particular use of an asset, which they have previously decided, it is a possibility that, that uh, the benefit that was supposed to be derived from that particular asset is not derived. And now, yes. Particular asset. Pe karenge, just the related up hint mill rare, special environment testing and the pre class of a set. Impairment pay decoger, Kiwi asset hair, jo complex asset hair. Chica, to humble impairment to those pay lavate. As any caring young particular say component pelagare. Humble the value, humble value of Nicalinge, to we'll get to know key component key value but three. और हमारे एसेट की क्या वैल्यू बच रही है उसके अकॉर्डिंग हम लोग जो रिवाइज वैल्यू आएगी उस पे डिप्रीशिएट कर लेते हैं जैसे मैं कल आपने एग्जांपल दिया था इन्वर्टेबल बैटरी का राइट लेट्स से बैटरी फुक गई बैटरी फुक नहीं कोई यूज में चेंज आ गया जिससे ज्यादा कंजम्पशन हो रहा है ओके ठीक है उससे मतलब वैल्यू बढ़ जाएगी बट इन्वर्टर की नहीं बढ़ेगी तो इसमें कंपोनेंट बेस्ड इंपेयरमेंट होगी तो फिर यहां पे कंपोनेंट बेस होगी अगर ऐसा कुछ हो रहा है कि पर्टिकुलर बिल्स कुछ पार्ट पे हो रहा है कि हम लोगों ने चेक करा कि इन्वर्टर की वैल्यू इज नॉट चेंजिंग तो only the value of battery is changing. So in that case, battery pay hum log kyunki usko alag se depreciate karte the. To hum log us pay impairment laga rahe. Thik hai? Lekin jaise hum logon ne yahan pe kal car ka bhi example liya tha. Wo uska accident ho gaya. To in that case, to wo pura asset hi destroy hua. Exactly. Isme kuch hard and fast rule nahi hai. IES jo jitne bhi hote hain, these are principle based and not rule based. That means it is not mandatory. You have to follow everything. But it is required that it is a general guideline for you all to follow so that the financial statements which are prepared by different companies are comparable and understandable by the users of the accounting statements. That is the whole sole purpose of it. Okay? Yes, please. एक बार बताओ आपने पर्टिकुलर एसेट खरीदा एंड यू डिसाइडेड कि मैं इस एसेट को इस पर्टिकुलर साइट पे यूज करने वाला ठीक है नाउ यू आर डिसाइडिंग कि या तो मैं उस एसेट को बेच देता हूं या फिर आप डिसाइड कर रहे हो दैट उस एसेट को मैं किसी और चीज में यूटिलाइज कर रही ठीक है तो यानी कि यहां पर पॉसिबिलिटी है कि हम लोग बोल रहे सिर्फ पॉसिबिलिटी हो सकती है कि मेरे उस एसेट की वैल्यू जो है कहीं वो गिर ना गई हो व्हिच इज व्हाई वी आर डिसाइडिंग कि हम इसका यूज चेंज कर लेना चाहिए कि यानी कि हमें वो एसेट जो बेनिफिट देना चाहिए था वो हमें वो बेनिफिट नहीं दे रहा व्हिच इज व्हाई यस टेक्नोलॉजी चेंज हम लोग एक्सटर्नल हिंट में डाल देते हैं बट इन एग्जाम्स यू डू नॉट हैव टू बाइफर्केट बिटवीन एन एक्सटर्नल और एन इंटरनल हिंट दिस इज जस्ट फॉर योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग सेक आई एम गिविंग यू एन एग्जांपल अगर आपको पेपर में कुछ भी गिवन होता है जो आपको लगता है कि हां इंपेयरमेंट हो सकती है तो देयर यू विल बी आस्क्ड टू और क्वेश्चंस में डायरेक्टली यू विल बी आस्क्ड टू कैलकुलेट द इंपेयरमेंट एंड नॉट प्रेडिक्ट की दिस इज नॉट एसबीआर पेपर वेयर वेयर एंड दे विल जस्ट गिव यू अ केस स्टडी एंड यू आर सपोज्ड टू डिसाइड whether there is any impairment that is happening or not here you do not take that decision here you will be given a question uh, maybe to calculate impairment or any other question related to it but these are some of the indicators because in true or false or match the following it happens that they may ask you about it that is there any impairment testing that is required or not so in that case you need to understand this is it clear now yes um ऐसे यूजुअली मतलब देखो अगर टेक्नोलॉजी चेंज हो रही है तो एकदम से तो नहीं होगी मतलब डिपेंड करता है कौन सा इवेंट पहले हुआ है तो ऑल्डो इंपेयरमेंट में अगर लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल ओवर हियर 
कि पहले जो है मेरा एसेट डैमेज हो गया एंड देन पोज दैट कोई नई कार लॉन्च हो गई या कुछ ऐसा हुआ जिसकी वजह से क्योंकि ऐसा होता है कोई नया फोन लॉन्च होता है तो जो पुराना फोन होता है उसकी वैल्यू कम हो जाती है ठीक है तो देन ऑल्सो दे चार्ज इम्पेयर तो वो लोग तो उस पॉइंट इन टाइम पे क्या करते हैं कि पहले जो भी इवेंट हुआ उसके बेसिस पे कर ले इम्पेयरमेंट दोबारा कर लेंगे अगर कुछ इवेंट हो रहा है तो ठीक है चेंज इन यूज ऑफ एन एसेट का मतलब ये जैसे एग्जाम्पल लेते हैं कि हमने डिसाइड करा था लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पास हियर क्योंकि वो मैंने आगे भी जाके देने वाली ठीक है अब बस का डिसाइड कर रखा था कि इस पर्टिकुलर रूट पे जो है बस चलेगी ठीक है अब क्या हुआ कि हम लोगों ने डिसाइड करा था अब बस हमारे लिए एसेट है ठीक है और वो हमें क्या करके देगी रेवेन्यू जनरेट करके देगी जिस भी वो रूट पर चल रही है नाउ वट है कि हम लोगों ने जैसा डिसाइड करा था दैट वट इज द बेनिफिट दैट आई एम गेट गोइंग टू गेट इन हियर लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल कि बस में फिफ्टी सीट्स है ठीक है तो यहां पर अप्रोक्सीमेटली I was supposed to earn a revenue of वन lakh or maybe whatsoever कि पूरा बस रूट पे जब बस चलती है तो ऐसे में तो मिलना चाहिए था But when जो मैंने actual में सोचा था वर्स इज वट एक्चुअली हैपन वो समथिंग डिफरेंट कि अब क्या हुआ कि मेरे एसेट का जो मैंने डिटरमाइन करा था कि मेरे को इतना इकोनॉमिक बेनिफिट उस पर्टिकुलर एसेट से मिलेगा आई एम नॉट रिपिंग दैट बेनिफिट आउट ऑफ इट ठीक है अब हम लोगों ने क्या करा अपने एसेट का यहाँ पर यूज चेंज कर दिया कि हम लोग अपने एसेट को किसी और चीज में यूटिलाइज करना स्टार्ट कर दिया लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल कि यहाँ पर ये बसेस जो है नॉर्मल रन कर रही थी अब हम लोगों ने सोचा कि यार ऐसा भी हो सकता है इंटरसिटी या समझ लो पहले नॉर्मल बस चलती थी जनरल पब्लिक के लिए चलती थी अब उन्होंने सोचा कि यार स्कूल से टाइप करके आई एटलीस्ट ऑन समथिंग ठीक है तो वेन एवर देर एन इंडिकेटर की द कंपनी इज डिसाइडिंग टू चेंज द यूज ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर सेट so that means it is possible that the benefit that it was supposed to give we are not getting that benefit out of it and the value would have decreased theek hai kyunki jo asset ki value hum log record karte hain apne books ke andar initially we record that cost and then hum log depreciation wagera charge karke record karte hain theek hai why are we recording that value because hame pata hai that we uh, hum log is use ke andar asset ko lekar aayenge to mere ko ye economic benefit us particular asset se milega But now what is happening over here? कि यहाँ पर वो लोग अगर change वो सोच रहे हैं कि we need to change it, then in that case there's a possibility that it is not giving us the same benefit it was supposed to give. Okay? Second use की वजह से we are not getting that benefit. हम लोगों ने जो सोच रखा था कि जो भी use में हम लोग लेकर आ रहे थे जैसे समझ लो कि within the city हम लोग operate कर रहे थे. ठीक है एंड मैंने सोचा था कि मेरे को इतना बेनिफिट होगा मैंने इतने की इन्वेस्टमेंट करी है बिकॉज अगर आप कुछ एसेट में इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हो सो यू बी गेटिंग सम बेनिफिट आउट ऑफ इट जो आपने सोचा था वैसा नहीं हुआ तो आप क्या करोगे उस एसेट को कहीं और यूटिलाइज करने की कोशिश करोगे सो दैट यू आर एबल टू ऑन बेटर ठीक है तो दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द इंडिकेटर की देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी कि हमारे एसेट की वैल्यू कुछ कम होगी ठीक है एसेट की वैल्यू कम होने का मतलब कि उसके यूज की वजह से हमें बिकॉज नाउ आई बी टेलिंग यू कि हम लोग वैल्यू इन यूज वगैरह ये सारे कॉन्सेप्ट पढ़ेंगे तो यू विल बी एबल टू रिलेटेड मोर कि हम लोग वैल्यू इन यूज और फेयर वैल्यू लेस कॉस्ट टू सेल विच एवर इज हायर उसके बेसिस पे हम लोग जो है इम्पेयरमेंट करते हैं वो अभी मैं समझा दू एज एन मेमरी प्रोग्रेस ठीक है इज इट क्लियर अपटिल हियर आई थिंक यस सोनाली मैम जैसे अभी आपने बोला कि कार के केस में व्हेन कार विल बी डिस्ट्रॉयड इन वन ऑफ द एक्सीडेंट्स और ऐसे करके तो कार तो डिस्ट्रॉय हो जाएगी लाइक एसेट तो खत्म ही हो जाएगा ना तो मतलब इम्पेयरमेंट का क्या ही उसमें मतलब वैल्यू थोड़ी ना घटेगी एसेट ही डिस्ट्रॉय हो जाएगा तो अगर एक बात बताओ अगर सिर्फ स्क्रैचेस लगे तो तो एसेट खत्म नहीं हुआ ना तो तो एसेट की वैल्यू जरूर कम हुई है दैट इज इम्पेयरमेंट अगर एसेट ही बिल्कुल खत्म हो गया तो तो हम अपने बुक्स में से रिमूव कर देंगे अपने एसेट को कि दिस वाज एन इवेंट दैट हैपेंड जिसकी वजह से मेरा एसेट डिस्ट्रॉय खत्म हो चुका और मैम जो इंपेयरमेंट होती है मतलब इंपेयरमेंट के बाद भी एसेट वैसे ही चलता है जैसे मतलब वो ओरिजिनली यूज हो रहा था एंड मान लो कोई इंपेयरमेंट हुई तो अगले साल जो भी कमिंग इयर्स होंगे उस वो एसेट इज यूज होता है एंड फिर डेप्रिसिएशन वगैरह वो सब सेम रहता है मतलब हां फिर अब जो रिवाइज वैल्यू आएगी अब हम डेप्रिसिएशन उस पे लगाया करेंगे ठीक है क्योंकि वैल्यू okay. मेरे एसेट की कम हो चुकी है ठीक है। so, like once in a while kind of a event, और उसके बाद 
यूजल चलता है उस वैल्यू पे एग्जैक्टली इम्पेयरमेंट इज समथिंग कि वो हर साल नहीं होने वाला है इफ देर इज एनी इंडिकेटर इफ देर इज एनी थिंग एनी इवेंट दैट इज है उसकी वजह से इम्पेयरमेंट होगी एंड देन ओनली विल बी चेंजिंग दमाउंट इन द बुक्स एंड उसके अकॉर्डिंग फिर हम लोग डेप्रीसिएशन लगा रहे हैं ठीक है ओके थैंक यू मैम डीवेल्युएशन मतलब कि हम लोग रिवेल्युएशन मॉडल जैसे यूज कर रहे होते हैं तो इन दैट केस हमारे आशा की जो भी वैल्यू होती है उसकी मार्केट प्राइस चेंज हो रही है दैट इज वाई वी आर चेंजिंग यस ठीक है अनदर इंडिकेटर ऑफ एम्पेयरमेंट इज प्लानिंग टू सेल एन एसेट यस वी विल अभी मैं बताती हूँ कि वो कैसे देखेंगे हम लोग यहाँ पर कुछ हुआ कोई इवेंट हुआ जिसकी वजह से वी आर टेस्टिंग की इम्पेयरमेंट हुई है नहीं ठीक है मार्केट वैल्यू तो वो चेंज हो रही है उसकी वजह से वील भी चेंजिंग द वैल्यू डीवेल्युएशन अगर आप बोलोगे तो यार वो मार्केट बेस्ड हो गया डेफिनेटली दैट इज एन एक्सटर्नल थिंग दैट इज है कि डीवेल्युएशन हो रहा है मेरे आसेट की वैल्यू चेंज हुई और मैंने अपने बुक्स में चेंज कर दिया अब इम्पेयरमेंट में क्या होगा अगर कुछ हो रहा है इवेंट उसकी वजह से आप अपनी वैल्यू चेंज करोगे ठीक है और ये मार्केट बेस जो है ये भी कभी कभार मतलब हमारे उसके अंदर एक्सटर्नल हिंट के अंदर आई एल ऑल्सो भी टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट ऑल्सो एग्जैक्टली इसके अंदर ये होता है कि सडनली वैल्यू फॉल हो गई बट दे समिट दैट यू विल बी गेटिंग कि जिसकी वजह से चेंज हो एंड वेन एवर वी चार्ज इम्पेयरमेंट इन द नोट टू अकाउंट वी ऑल्सो गिव अ प्रॉपर एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द सेम दैट वट वॉज द इवेंट दैट हैपन ड्यू टू वच दर इज एन इम्पेयरमेंट दैट इज चार्ज ड्यूरिंग द ईयर इन एवरी ईयर ईयर इम्पेयरमेंट इज नॉट चार्ज Impairment will only charge when, whenever there is an okay. One of the event that I can remember of is Russian and Ukraine conflict that happened. Because of which there were a lot of companies that were charging impairment. Can you think of one of the reason that could be there? Because of Ukraine and Russian war that happened, the conflict that they had, due to which. some of the companies charge impairment what do you think could be a reason that they charge it the ma'am general depression of the market okay one of them boycott okay and also the destruction of property whatever exactly in the assets of the bank quick hmm usually assets of the bank रिकॉर्डिंग सो अंडर नोट टू अकाउंट एवरी रीजन इज रिटर्न एंड इट इज रिटर्न इन वेरी अंडरस्टैंडेबल मैनर so that whenever you read any annual report or the financial statements you will know what was the reason that they ha- that the company has charged impairment or any other thing in the books of the company okay is it clear now one one more possibility can be there that the company is planning to sell an asset whenever a company is planning that we that we should be just selling that particular asset that is also one of the indicator that the asset is not reaping us the benefit it was supposed to which is why the company is thinking of to sell off that asset that can also be one of the indicator of impairment okay we are just talking about that it can be an indicator of impairment and not saying that the value has actually fallen down whenever there is an indicator we will be testing that actually there is a fall in value or not if there is no fall in value then it's fine we will continue the asset on the same terms itself but if there is any impairment then we'll be charging it to profit and loss account is it clear then there's also a possibility of change in technology that can happen like in especially in tech industry is it happens that after every uh, month or in few months the comp- another competitor or their own company itself launches a new product due to which the value of their existing product falls down देखो डीवेल्युएशन इज कि मेरा प्रोडक्ट की मार्केट प्राइस चेंज हो गया ठीक है 
देखो आइडियली यस बट डी वैल्युएशन के अंदर देखो अब कंपनी कॉस्ट मॉडल भी यूज कर सकती है ठीक है अब अगर कंपनी कॉस्ट मॉडल यूज कर रही है तो उस पॉइंट इन टाइम पे मार्केट से उनको तो कुछ लेना देना है ही नहीं बट स्टिल उनके एसेट की वैल्यू गिर रही है तो इन दैट केस वो लोग तो इम्प्लॉयमेंट चार्ज करेंगे ना अब बात आती है रिवैल्युएशन मॉडल वगैरह कंपनी यूज कर रही है ठीक है अगर इफ द कंपनी इज यूजिंग रिवैल्युएशन मॉडल वो मार्केट बेस्ड फैक्टर्स जो है उनके कंसिडर होते रहते हैं इफ देर एनी मटेरियल चेंज वील रिकॉर्ड इट बट इफ देर इज एनी इवेंट दैट इज हैपनिंग कि जैसे लेट से आईफोन फिफ्टीन लॉन्च हुआ जिसकी वजह से आई फोन की वैल्यू गिरी तो उनको इम्पेयरमेंट चार्ज करना इज इट क्लियर मेकिंग सेंस टू यू ऑल शो एनी डाउट अपटिल उसमें तो वो कॉन्सेप्ट आया था कि एनआरवी वगैरह पे बट जैसे चेंज इन टेक्नोलॉजी की वजह से हमारे मेजर एसेट की वैल्यू चेंज हो रही है ठीक है लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ओवर ही जिसमें बिल्कुल हो सकती है इन्वेंट्री में तो कॉस्ट और एनआरवी होता तो आई एस टू तो वो ऑलरेडी चीज इनकलकेट कर लेता तो आई एस टू तो हमारा इसके अंदर आता भी नहीं है वैसे भी यहाँ तो हम लोग उन एसेट्स की बात कर रहे हैं जो टैंजेबल एसेट्स है आई एस थर्टी सिक्स वगैरह ये सॉरी आई एस सी सी वगैरह के अंदर ये जो हमारे एसेट्स आते हैं उनकी वैल्यू गिर जाना ठीक है इसमें टैंजेबल एंड टैंजल्स दोनों वैसे कंसिडर होते इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉपर्टी वगैरह पे कह सकते हैं क्योंकि उनकी भी वैल्यू गिर सकती है बट वैसे यूजली बताऊँ तो प्रॉपर्टी यूजली अप्रिशिएट होती है इन रियल टर्म्स बट अगर हाँ कुछ वैल्यू कॉल कर रही है तो यस रिसेशन आने की वजह से कितना कुछ हो जाता है तो इन दैट केस इम्पेयरमेंट चार्ज होगी एंड दैट रीजन विल बी रिटर्न इन योर नोट्स टू अकाउंट्स पर मैम वो सेम तो मार्केट चीज है ना तो उसमें तो जैसे हमने बोला कि मार्केट भी वैल्यू इश्यू के असर में तो वो तो देखो हो सकता है यू गाइज आर रिलेटिंग इट करेक्टली बट एट द सेम टाइम अगर एकदम से कुछ वैल्यू फॉल हो रही होती है एंड लेट्स अगर हमारा जो है रिवैल्यूएशन मॉडल पे तो तो हम लोग फिर भी मार्केट बेस्ड फैक्टर्स कंसिडर कर चुके होते हैं ठीक है अब मटीरियल चेंज आता है तो इन दैट केस हमें रिवैल्यूएशन करनी पड़ती है अपने एसेट की राइट लेकिन यहाँ पर क्या होता है कि एकदम से अगर मेरे वैल्यू ऑफ एसेट चेंज हो रहा है कॉस्ट मॉडल भी यूज कर रहे हैं तब भी तो हम लोग वैल्यू हमें शिफ्ट करना ही पड़ेगा ना रिगार्डलेस ऑफ दी फैक्ट कि मार्केट uh, में क्या चल रहा है मेरे एसेट की वैल्यू फॉल हो रही है तो इट शुड बी वेन एवर यू आर रिकॉर्डिंग एनी थिंग इन योर बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट यू नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट अमाउंट गिव ट्रू पिक्चर ऑफ योर बिजनेस यू डू नॉट नीड टू डू क्रिएटिव अकाउंटिंग यू डू नॉट नीड टू मैनिकुलेट द फिगर्स when you will be studying or thinking you will be studying it from a different perspective altogether and there you will be testing all of these things what the management is doing now you are on the management side sitting and preparing the financial statements okay next uh, for those of you who have already studied fm unko to pata hoga ye market capitalization wagera what is that exactly so agar hamari carrying value of net asset is greater than the market capitalization What do we mean by net asset? Total asset minus liabilities. Or, okay. हम लोगों ने ये चीज पढ़ी थी. राइट ये बेसिक फंडा होता है हमारा बैलेंस शीट का राइट अब एक बात बताओ लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल ओवर हियर कि मेरी इक्विटी की वैल्यू जो है वट एवर वैल्यू ऑफ इक्विटी दैट आई एव रिकॉर्डिंग इन माय बैलेंस शीट इट वाज लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल दैट इट वाज सेवेंटी थाउजेंड इन द बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट ओके एंड लेट्स से दैट द कंपनी हैज Ten thousand shares in total, and the market price of the shares is dollar five. So, what is the exact value that should be there? Fifty thousand, right? This is the value of shares that should be there, but in the books of account, it is seventy thousand. So, what do you think? If the value is falling down. Since I am recording my equity at seventy thousand, it is overvalued. 
that means i'll have to get it down to 50000 because that is the exact value of my equity in, and that should be recorded in my books to account, books of accounts so now what do we need to do here is whenever there's a hint that the market capitalization that means the market price is changing it can also impact the net asset and this is also one of the indicator of impairment that we need to charge impairment since as i've given you this example it is changing by 20000 so the actual amount that should be recorded in my balance sheet should be 50000 and not 70000 so this is what is impairment testing once we have done the impairment testing we should we would be knowing that whether the value of that particular asset has changed or not so, so since impairment charge karenge yani ki usko hum log profit and loss ke andar charge kar denge theek hai write off kar denge and the asset will now be recorded at it is not necessary but it is one of the indicator of impairment don't test karenge exactly exactly so whenever there is an indicator whenever there is a hint then only we will be doing impairment testing okay is it clear whatever we have studied so far can i proceed further sorry there can be any event the value of the asset can fall down so in that case what we are going to do is we'll be taking that into consideration that the value has suddenly fallen down and in that case impairment will be charged so whatsoever the reason is it it would be stated in your uh notes to accounts okay these are some of the reasons that are stated in your book so that is why we go wait through is it clear yes okay just give me a minute to write some of the proofs Okay, so let's say uh, you can actually note it down once I've written down everything. So let's take an example over here that the cost of the asset is 10,000 and the life is 10 years. So if no method is given in the question, then it is straight line method. And if no residual value or scrap value is given, it is zero. So in this case, the depreciation will be how much? 100,000 divided by 10, it should be. 10,000 for the particular year, right? So on 31st December, if I have to calculate my net book value, what it will be? 100,000 was the value on the first day. Less 10,000, the depreciation that we have charged during the year. So now the value of my asset is 90,000 on 31st of December. Is it clear up till here? Okay. Now what happened? So, what was the value of my asset? It was 90,000. Let's take an example over here and we take higher off.
let's say there was an accident that happened and due to which we have gotten hint that there is a possibility that there might be impairment right so now what do we need to do in here we need to do impairment testing right whenever we do impairment testing it is always considered what would be the recoverable amount recoverable amount means if i sell that particular asset what is the amount that i am going to get out of it or what is what would be the value if i use that particular asset in future use as well so whichever amount is higher that means if selling of the asset will give give me more benefit will give me more inflows then what should be or uh, what should a rational person do that person would sell that sell of that asset but if using that asset is more beneficial then in that case we'll be using that particular asset right so let's see fair value is the market value okay so the market value less whatever co cost we are incurring for selling that particular asset let's say as 60000 over here okay so let's say the value of the asset was 70000 and we have incurred 10000 for selling that particular asset so that means 60000 would be my fair value less, less cost to sell of that particular asset right what is the value in use in here? Value in use is the present value of future cash flows. For those of you who have already studied FM, you might be familiar with this concept. In yesterday's class also, we have done discounting. So here also we do the same thing. So after discounting, let's take an example. A value in use simply means whenever we are using a particular asset, we will have determined some benefit that we are going to actually get from that particular set right that means what are we going to do in here we'll calculate the present value of what is the benefit that we are going to get in another five years if i use this particular asset from now on so let's see here it is seventy thousand. so which value is higher if i sell the asset or if i use the asset yes. use the asset so it should be seventy thousand should be the recoverable amount right does it make sense is it okay up till here what is the value that i have recorded in the books of accounts ninety thousand. and what is the value of my asset now seventy thousand. so is there any impairment that is happening impairment of twenty thousand is there that means it needs to be charged to your pnl and now what will be the journal entry P since it is an expense pnl account debit to, to asset account 20000 this would be the journal entry that we'll keep passing is it clear up till here how do we calculate the present value we'll be doing it in further examples but for now, is it clear how to calculate, uh, get the recoverable amount and based on what factors do we take a decision? You can actually note it down. Do you want me to scroll it up? Yes, um, basically, what recoverable amount means? Recoverable amount means, uh, like I said, that if there was any damage that happened to that asset. So is it beneficial to use that asset for another years for the useful life? Or is it better to sell off that asset to get rid of it, which is going to give you more benefit? That will be the recoverable amount. Okay. So if it is better, like in this case, it was better to use that particular asset. Okay. So the value was seventy thousand, and in books, what have I recorded? Ninety thousand. So still the value has fallen down, right? There's also a possibility that the value may not fall down. So in that case, we'll be recording the asset at its same value. Okay. 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 So in books of accounts, what will be the value of asset that will be recorded now? Asset will be recorded at 70,000 now in the balance sheet, in the SOS. Okay.
Let me know whenever you all are done, then we'll continue further. जो आपने लिखा है मैनेज करें ये क्यों लगा मतलब बेचने बेचने में में देखो कुछ ना कुछ ना हम लोग कॉस्ट करते हैं अपने एसेट को 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 के लिए चाहे फिर उसको उसको मार्केट मार्केट जैसे करना हो ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि हम so can i say whenever my carrying amount is greater than the recoverable amount then impairment is happening in the previous question what have we done here the net book value that is the carrying value of my asset was how much 90000 and the recoverable amount was 70000 right so whenever my carrying value is more then in that case impairment has happened and that should be charged in your sop okay is it clear हम लोग सेल भी करेंगे तब भी हमें करनी पड़ेगी रिपेयरमेंट
you can actually note it down later on once we are done with discussion the discussion yeah. part so now in this question what is actually happening is the cost of the asset is 20000 and the life of the asset is 5 years so that means if we have to calculate the depreciation it will be 20000 divided by 5, five. that is 4000 4, per annum so during the year there was nothing that has happened till now so what is the value of the asset on uh, 31st december 16000 16, right then again we were using the asset and depreciation of 4000 would have been charged right so now the net book value of the asset is 12000 right is it clear up till here now they are saying there was an accident on 31st of december 07 so that means we have an indicator that there might be possibility that we may have impairment okay so now what do we have to do is we need to calculate like in the previous question we did we need to take calculate the recoverable amount whenever there is any indicator first thing that we are going to do is calculating the recoverable amount so how do we calculate it we need to take it fair value less cost to sell or it would be value in use whichever is whichever is higher perfect so in this case in question itself they have given that the fair value less cost to sell is 10,000 so in that case 10,000 is recorded over here what is the value in use value in use we have to calculate in the question they have given us what will be the future expected cash flows and this is the discount rate that they have given and based on that we have to calculate the present value because what is value in use present value of future cash flows okay so because of this asset in future in year one i was supposed to get three thousand in year two i'll get two thousand and in year three six thousand will be the cash flow that i'll be getting from this asset so this is the future value that we have whatever value that we have now will be different to the value that we'll have in future the value of thousand rupees now would not be the same in the next year right similarly they have given us the future value so what do we need to do we need to get to present value that means we need to do the discounting so for those of you who have already done fm you might be familiar with how to calculate it so what you need to do is you just need to uh, calculate the discount factor and uh, in fr you wouldn't be given the table so that means you need to calculate it on your calculator itself so Huh? Question में factor given होगा या फिर calculate पे अगर आपको calculate करना है तो वो बहुत ही rarest case होगा मतलब कभी वैसे factor like in previous question also that we did yesterday since that FR level they are not testing that how do you calculate the discount factor reason being that is a concept that is done in your financial management exam and in that case you are given with the present and future value tables okay so I'm writing the discount factor all you have to do is you have to multiply it 0 0.909 0 0.826 and 0 0.751 so now what will be the present value of the asset please calculate first 2727 okay so this is the value in use that we have okay so value in use is what it's the present value of the future cash flows so future cash flows were given in the question discount rate is given all you have to do is you have to multiply and get the present value and sum it up to get the value in use of that particular asset okay so now the value in use is how much? Triple eight five. And 
the value of uh, the value to sell that particular asset yeah, is 10000 yeah, yeah. so what is better to sell that asset to get rid of it or to use it to, to sell it right so 10000 is the recoverable amount that we have okay so in the question it says that um did i write it in the net book value is how much 12000 and the recoverable amount is 10000 so is there any impairment that is happening 2000 impairment yeah. of 2000 is there how did we get the impairment the carrying value of the asset was 12000 that i have recorded in the books of accounts and once i have sold that asset what is the amount that i'm going to get is 10000 is the recoverable amount whenever carrying amount is higher and recoverable amount is low then in that case there is impairment so impairment charge of 2000 will be done in your so what will be the journal entry pnl2 mm -hmm. asset for 2000 i'll just scroll it up for you all um here or do you want me to scroll it down if you have noted it down are you all writing this done everyone thanks you are you writing this okay online students you can also confirm it to me once if you want me to scroll it down okay whenever you are done right done okay ma'am okay everyone can i scroll it down yes ma'am i think you guys are writing done okay this also no you're writing okay let me know whenever you all are done then you can actually scroll this Done. And are you the government to cover it? Sir, yes, it's charging. Can you it? I need to be financial. Almost all of these are in the same way. 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 और ओसी है वगैरह उस साइड पर वो अलग होता है हां आई पर इसमें इन अप्लाई होता है मैंने भी खुद दे डिग्री दो भाई वो हम उसका जो डिग्री दो उसका बेनिफिट छोड़ दो मतलब नुकसान का फायदा नहीं हो करके देख लो देखो गुडविल से कैलकुलेटर से जब हम अपने बिजनेस को बेस्ट करें वो गुडविल सिर्फ हम लोग परचेस गुडविल रिकॉर्ड करते हैं वी नेवर रिकॉर्ड सेल्फ जनरेटेड गुडविल इन द बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट कि अगर इफ आई हैव टू डिटरमाइन द वैल्यू ऑफ माय बिजनेस so that is recorded. For she is good will sit of record. Are you all done writing this? Yes, Can I continue with the further notes then?
Value in value in V I U so. Exactly. Bus last T G is liquid and then I'll just scroll it up. Okay. So here, or do why guys want me to scroll it up? Let me know whenever you are done writing. Right? Some of you are writing. Very good. Time me Are you all ready?
I didn't realize that teaching ki time at now which okay. What? I wish it would have been another way around for you. <laughs> okay. So can we start with the discussion? Okay, so the points that I have written over here are actually some things that I want you to keep in mind in questions. A lot of times you may not have to take a decision related to impairment, but in real life, these are the things that needs to be considered. One of them is sometimes it happens that there is any sale agreement that we have done with the other party that in future I'll be selling uh, my asset for this much value to you. If there is a binding agreement that I have already done in past, then in that case, we do not calculate the fair value less cost to sell in terms of impairment. Then in that case, the value at which I have agreed that I'll be selling my asset to you for this much amount, then in that case, that becomes my fair value less cost to sell. And I compare that value with my value in use and whichever value is higher, that is considered for your impairment. Okay. So sometimes whenever there is a sales agreement that I have all and it is binding, and we have already predetermined that this should be the value of the asset, then in that case, we'll be uh, like, I'll be selling my asset. I have already agreed it with you, and I have a proper written document for the same. So in that case, I cannot uh, record the asset based on the market value reason being I have already uh, had an agreement that I'll be selling my asset to you for this particular amount so in that case we do not have to calculate the fair value less cost to sell whatever is the bid price whatever is the price that we have already decided that I'll be selling my asset to you for this particular amount let's say I have already agreed with you that I'll be selling you my asset for ten thousand dollars then in that case what's uh, if there's any indicator of impairment, there are two options that we have. Either uh, we'll be using fair value to less cost to sell. That means get rid of that asset or use value in use, whichever is higher. So let's take an example over here that uh, in this case, since I've already agreed to you, I'll not be calculating fair value less cost to sell. The bid price, that is the price that I've agreed with you, that will be the price that I'll be recording. And with that, I'll be comparing my value. Okay. Is it clear? Second thing that we have in here is sometimes the asset is non-transferable. That means we cannot sell out that asset. We cannot transfer it. Sometimes there are some clauses whenever we purchase an asset that we have decided that this asset will not be sold and will be kept in inheritance. Like till the time the company is not wind up, we, we will have this particular asset. Then in that case, there is no use of calculating the fair value since we have eliminated that option that we will not be selling it that particular set then in that case whatever the value in uses we'll be comparing that to the uh value of the carrying uh, the carrying value of their set okay uh sometimes it happens it mostly happens in indian companies i haven't seen any of my client having said that but uh in Indian companies, it happens to say uh, family owned businesses, or they said, say. so they have already decided that uh, we'll not be selling off this particular set, to say inheritance property, uh, ancestors know side and our parents also say that we'll not be selling off that particular set. So that means it is already decided that the use of the asset will be, even if there is no use, we'll not be selling that asset. Okay. So in that case, if I have to book an impairment, if there's any indicator of the same, then in that case, what am I going to do in here is I'll be comparing my value in use to the fair value of that, uh, sorry, to the carrying value of that particular set, whatever amount that I've recorded in the book, I'll be comparing it with the value in use. Value in use is present value of future cash flows. Is it clear making sense? For value in use, there are three things that I want to key. Uh, what you all to keep in mind first is uh, when uh, sometimes it happens that uh, it is predetermined or the company decides that in future we'll be incurring some of the capital expenditure and uh, based on that we'll be getting cash flows this is something that we are just in the stage of 
thinking and researching and we are not doing anything about it. That considerations are not taken place in value in use. Value in use simply means that we are calculating the present value of the expected future cash flows. If I'm saying that I'll be incurring that expense and that expense is going to give me this benefit, I'll not be recording it now in my books. Reason being, I haven't even incurred that expense. It is not sure and I'm not, it is not confirmed that I'll be in good, actually receiving some benefit out of it. That has not happened. We are just actually thinking about it. We are just forecasting. So that is not take, uh, that calculation is not included in your value news. Value news means that this is the expected cash flows and that particular amount will be included. Okay. Next we have is use value in you take cash flows and whenever you are using value in use then in that case the cash flows are taken for next five years only in your exam there wouldn't be any case that uh, they'll be asking you to calculate more and hypothetically that can be there but in real terms for next five years only because it is very difficult for the company to determine uh, the cash flows post five years even if you ask me the value of two years we can still predict it based on the current situation and our past trends. But post that, it wouldn't be possible for us. There are some companies who claim that we can actually calculate the same. So if they have proper evidence and proofs that they can say that these are the benefits that we are going to get, they need to give a proper, proper disclosure. Other than that, in all cases, value in use is calculable for the next five years. That means for whatever cash flows that we are going to get for next five years, only that will be considered in your calculation. These are all the theoretical areas that I'm telling you about. This is nothing related to the questions that you will learn. Okay, is it clear up till here? Mm -hmm. And lastly, sometimes it also happened while uh, the entire industry that we are operating is, is booking impairment on their assets, but we are not doing that. So that might be something suspicious to the auditors. So in that case, what do we do? We ha uh, it is required by the accounting standards code that you need to give a disclosure for the same. If the entire industry is booking impairment and we are not booking, then in that case, we need to give a disclosure for that. Okay, is it clear up till here? Do you want me to repeat any of the point? Ma'am, the impairment Right of use, well, I Yar, uh, usme na, bhai cheez depend on you. Hmm. 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 So, yani ki, ab main market mein to bech nahi sakti. It is a binding agreement that I have to sell my asset to you. So in that case, fair value less cost to sell ni kaadi ki koi zorot nahi hai. Ham log kya compare karenge impairment ka indicator hai toh. So in that case, we'll be comparing jo maine, uh, jo aap se agreement ka rakha hai wo, ya fir use karne ki. Whichever value is higher, I'll take that decision. Second cheez hai, agar non-transferable asset, ki I cannot, uh, there's a clause ki mein usko asset ko transfer nahi kar sakti hu. So in that case, we will do fair value bhi liye irrelevant. Ho fair value is value in use. If I have said that in the future, I will incur this particular expenditure and that I will incur these cash flows. Aayenge. This is something irrelevant. Whatever is the expected cash flow, we will use it in our calculations. Second thing is that cash flows are the next five years tak ki hum log lete hai, because it is not possible for us to predict uske beyond. Okay, some companies have claim that they so they also have to give disclosure. Ki on what basis are they saying that they will do so much cash flows? Wo log but in questions that we have given, hoga, even if they give uh, more than five years cash flow, so that is something hypothetical situation that they are giving you to you and you can take it in your calculation. But in real terms, if a company has been doing it for five years, they will give disclosure. Another thing is that if the whole industry is doing impairment and we are not doing it for five years, so in that case, what do we do? Auditor means that the person who has our financial statements check our financial statements. Now, this is something fishy. That the whole industry is reducing its assets and value. Only you are not doing it. So, you don't want to assets manipulate your assets. So, in that case, what do we do? It is required by the accounting standard board that we have to disclose our financial statements. Okay? Is it clear up till here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Then we have three assets 
for which we need to make sure that the impairment testing is done annually. One of them is purchased goodwill. What do we mean by purchased goodwill? Whenever we acquire any business for exactly whatever premium amount that we are paying for purchasing a business is the goodwill amount that we are paying. So that purchased goodwill is recorded in our books. And for that, we, we actually do the impairment testing that whether the value of that particular asset has fallen down. If yes, then in that case, we need to write it. Okay. Second can be intangible assets with indefinite life. What is an intangible asset which has an indefinite life? Patents, Patents may be life. Patents may be hoti as life. Name any asset which can have indefinite life. Self-generated goodwill is not recorded in the books of accounts. Royalty, mm -hmm. not really. Rights. You don't copyright the creative over there. Exactly. Exactly. I'll just give you an example over here. Uh, Jesse, Koi industry hai, who has already uh, made something and unke alawa, kisi or an industry mein vaisa kuch nahi kara. So, this is something new and pata hai ki in future bhi koi vaisa creating nahi kar sakta. So, in that case, the that intangible asset that you record may have an indefinite life. In that case, hum log usko annually test kar. Okay. If there's something out of box that you have created and you know that you have patents, values, copyrights, you can do it. So, in that case, that is something intangible set with indefinite lives. Third thing that can be there intangible set that is not available for use. That means we will not be charging any amortization on that asset. Assets are only depreciated or amortized when they are available for use. So, if your asset is under development stage, so in that case, that is not recorded in your books to uh, books of accounts, right? That means if an asset is not available for use, that means we'll not be depreciating that asset. We'll not be amortizing that asset. So in that case, every year we consider that we need to do impairment testing. So jabbi koi asset esa hoga that is given to uh, you in the question. Jo asset is ki indefinite life ho ki, ya jo asset is purchased goodwill hai. So for that also, the, uh, you have just paid the amount, lekin uska koi event honi ki waise, there is no indicator that you are going to get. To hum log khud se check karenge ki kya humare asset ki value actually mein fall hui hai, kya nahi hui hai. Thik hai? So these are the three things that uh, for uh, which if, even if there is no indicator or anything, we need to do testing annually. Rest for all the assets, we will be doing impairment testing only when we have an indicator of this. Is it clear up till here? Any doubt? Okay. So before we proceed, we can actually take a break for it's 5.15 right now. Till 5.30, we can take a break. Okay. Okay. What happened? <laughs> Yeah, what table? <laughs> if you want, I can actually shift no, it. No, no. Paka? Mm -hmm.
CTL is cost to sell, okay? Okay. So here we have two things, revaluation and impairment. So whenever a company is using revaluation model, that means whether we need to revalue the asset or devalue the asset, it is a choice or an option that the company has which model to follow. There are two major models that we have studied, cost or revaluation. So it's by their own choice that they want to follow revaluation model. That means they want to record their asset at the fair value or the market value, right? And for, let's say, if for one asset we are following revaluation model, so for the entire class of asset, we need to follow the same, okay? But when it comes to impairment, it is something that is mandatory regardless of the factor, whichever model we are following. Even if it is revaluation model, if, even if it is cost model, whenever there is an indicator, we'll be doing impairment testing and seeing whether, whether there's any impairment that has happened during the year or not. Second thing that we have in here is revaluation model is an assumed loss. Assumed loss means that is because we are using the revaluation model whenever uh, we charge anything to the uh, profit and loss account or we take any unrealized gain to revaluation reserve, it is something that is assumed based on the market price. It has not actually happened. But when it comes to impairment, it is an actual loss that is happening. That means the value has actually fallen down, which is why I'm writing this loss in the financial statements. Okay, but when it comes to revaluation model, it, it means that it is an assumed loss because of the choice of measurement model that I have taken. If I'm using revaluation model and any amount is changing, that means if my asset is second, if my asset is increasing from 100 to 110, that means now I'll be recording my asset at 110. So this is an unrealized gain. It actually didn't happen. It is not an inflow that I would have earned that ten dollars, right? But I'll be changing that amount. Cash flow, nahi ho raha, but market value, market value change ho gaye. To revaluation jab hum log revaluation karte hain, hamari asset ki value increase dikh rahi hoti. Assume loss ho gaya ya assume gain ho gaya, wo toh unrealized hai wo cheez. Ab impairment ke case mein kya hua? Agar let's say even if I have to sell that asset, to wo particular event hua, uski wajah se I'm taking that decision na. Nuksan to hua hi na, mera asset samjho itne ka pada hua tha. Jab main bech rahi hoon, us time pe val, matlab asset kharaab ho gaya, uski value ekdam se bahut zada gir gayi hai. To mere ko actually us time pe to nuksan hoga. Wo toh main kar jaroo plan kar raha hoon, toh plan karte hain. Even if I am using that asset. Yes. Tab bhi cash flows pe mera kuch na kuch to farak aaya hoga na. 
अगर इम्पेयरमेंट हुई है तो दैट मीन जो रिकॉर्डेड वैल्यू है और जो एक्चुअल वैल्यू है उसमें कुछ ना कुछ तो फर्क आया तभी इम्पेयरमेंट हुई है तो नुकसान तो आपको अभी नहीं तो आगे जाकर कभी झेलना तो है ही ना आप अपने बुक्स के अंदर लॉस राइट ऑफ तो कर ही दो ना इवन इफ अभी आपने पैसे उसके लिए वसूल किया रिवेल्युएशन में भी हम यही करते हैं क्योंकि जो भी वैल्यू में चेंज आता है मार्केट वैल्यू के के अंदर क्या होता है कि हमने अगर बाय चॉइस हमने डिसाइड करा कि मॉडल अपने उसमें रिकॉर्ड करूंगी इम्पेयरमेंट में अगर कोई इवेंट हो रहा है तो मेरे को उसको राइट ऑफ करना पड़ेगा उसमें मेरे पास चॉइस नहीं बचेगी पहली चीज दूसरी चीज अगर कभी कभार होता है तो हम लोग रिवर्स करते हैं रिवर्सल ऑफ इम्पेयरमेंट होता है उसके ठीक है अगर रिवर्स होगा तो लेकिन अगर ऐसे कुछ नहीं हो रहा तो इन दैट केस मेरे को जो नुकसान हुआ है वो तो मुझे राइट ऑफ करना पड़ेगा ठीक है अब चाहे फिर वो मेरे को मॉनिटरली एक्चुअल में कुछ पे करना हो या ना करना ठीक है दैट इज दी डिफरेंस बिटवीन दैट ठीक है नेक्स्ट वी हैव एन एग्जाम्पल लेट से जब भी लेट से वी आर स्टैंडिंग एट फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी टू एंड we have a cost of 100 dollars and life of 10 years that means dollar 10 will be my depreciation 100 upon 10 so 10 per annum will be my depreciation at this point in time what is my net book value of the asset 90 dollars right 100 will i have purchased the asset for 100 dollar 10 is the depreciation that is charged during the year that means net book value of the asset will be 90 right so now what do i have to do is they are saying that there was an asset damage that has happened at the end of the year let's say if the company is using cost model so in that case their net book value will be how much dollar 90 okay if the company is using fair value model okay i've actually uh, um, let's take it to टेस्टिंग and then we'll be getting the results that whether impairment has actually occurred or not right so now what do we have to do in here the impairment is sorry the recoverable amount fair value less cost to sell is how much 90 over here and value in use is 115 so in that case which is higher value in use it is 115 and in the books of accounts what is the value that i have recorded under cost model 90 so is there an impairment that has happened no there is no impairment that means we do not have to change so in this case no impairment so there can also be cases where there is no impairment that is there in the question okay if we take revaluation model then also is there any still no, still no. okay is it clear if i would have changed this amount to let's say at then 90 would have been a higher amount and under revaluation there was an impairment that has happened but in cost model nothing would have changed right if i would have changed the amount that's it okay then we have um, yes हम इन कॉस्ट मॉडल लाइक व्हेन द अमाउंट इज 80 तो फिर इंपेयरमेंट क्यों नहीं होगा कॉस्ट मॉडल में अब आप एक बात बताओ आपने अपनी बैलेंस शीट के अंदर नेट बुक वैल्यू कितनी रिकॉर्ड कर रखी है 90 राइट दिस इज द वैल्यू एट व्हिच योर एसेट इज रिकॉर्डेड फेयर वैल्यू लेस कॉस्ट टू सेल कितना है 90 है एंड वैल्यू इन यूज 80 है फॉर इंस्टेंस व्हिच इज द हायर अमाउंट 90 90 तो रिकवरेबल अमाउंट आपका 90 होता एंड आपका एसेट बुक में पे रिकॉर्डेड है तो कोई इंपेयरमेंट तो कोई नहीं ठीक है ओके लेट्स से अगर ये मेरा 85 होता ठीक है सो व्हिच अमाउंट विल बी द रिकवरेबल अमाउंट 85 यहां पर 
ठीक है तो यहाँ पर पांच की इम्पेयरमेंट हो रही है वो मैं पी एन एल में चार्ज करूंगी एंड एसेट को एटी फाइव पे रिकॉर्ड करके इस अमाउंट पे अब आगे से हम लोग डेप्रीशन लगाएंगे ठीक है हाँ कुछ भी ले रहे थे तो ठीक है ओके जी नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज एन अदर कॉन सॉरी Okay, so let's say we are standing at year zero. That is the time period that I purchased my asset for thousand dollars, and the life of the asset is how much? Ten years. You guys can actually note the note this down later on. If that's okay. Uh, the cost is thousand dollars, and the life of the asset is ten. That means depreciation will be hundred, right? So for the first year, nothing has happened. That means hundred dollar would be the depreciation charge, and net book value will be nine hundred. Let's say in year two also, in year two the net book value was how much nine hundred, and the recoverable amount is dollar six thirty. Is there any impairment that has happened during the year? This is the carrying amount. Net book value is nine hundred, and the recoverable amount is six thirty. Yes, Whenever carrying amount is <laughs> higher than the recoverable amount, that means there is an impairment that is charged. So, what is the amount of impairment over here? Two seventy will be the impairment that I am charging. So, in that case, what should be my journal entry? P and L to a set account for two seventy. Right? Up till here, is it okay? now from now onwards my asset will be recorded at dollar 630 in my sofp sofp means balance sheet right so that means what will be the updated depreciation 630 divided by how many years one year has passed that means Nine years. That means dollar seventy will be my updated depreciation. So from now onwards, I will be depreciating my asset for seventy dollars. Okay. So for next year, what is the amount of depreciation? Seventy. So now, what is the net book value? Five sixty. For second year, again the depreciation will be charged at dollar seventy. Now, what is the net book value? Four nine. Okay, so now the recoverable amount is dollar five eighty. What do you think? Is there any impairment that should be charged? No, but we have previously charged some impairment. So under cost model, it says whenever or uh, you have already previously charged an impairment, and there is an increase in future that is happening. So. Whatever impairment you have charged, you can reverse it, but there is also a limit to it, to the extent of. No. To the extent of whatever. I will write that here first. To the extent of what if you shown. Historical cost or NPV carrying the let's say if there was no impairment that has happened, 
then in that case what what would have been carrying value over here that means nothing happened in this year and every year we would have taken 100 as our depreciation so that means our net book value would have been 700 up till here only you can actually take that into consideration how i'll just tell you okay so what is the amount of increase that is happening right now what do we have in here historical cost or the nbv is how much 700 up till this extent we can actually uh, reverse the impairment if there is any impairment beyond that we cannot charge it so let's see here what was the amount uh, recoverable amount 580 nbv was 490 so now the value of the asset is increasing from 490 to 580 it is below this limit if impairment wouldn't have been charged this would have been our net book book net book value originally right so beyond that we cannot go so it is under that right so till this limit it is acceptable that we can reverse the impairment recoverable amount जो है हाँ यहाँ पर कुछ ना कुछ हुआ होगा जिसकी वजह से हमने करा और उससे हमें पता लगा कि recoverable amount is more तो अगर मैंने past में कभी भी impairment charge कर रखी है तो what will I do here is कि I'll see कि past में impairment has already been charged तो I'll just reverse it तो reverse हम लोग उस extent तक कर सकते हैं जितनी मेरी carrying value होती if there was no impairment that was charged तो कितनी थी मेरी carrying value उस case में क्या होती 700 होती तो 700 तक acceptable है उसके ऊपर आप अपने asset की value cost से ऊपर थोड़ी दिखा दो ठीक है तो there is certain boundary that is maintained कि इससे ऊपर आप नहीं जा सकते ठीक है clear है यहाँ तक तो यानी कि this reversal is acceptable so that means तो मेरी value क्या होनी चाहिए अब मैं अपने asset की value बढ़ा रही हूँ asset account debit to pnl reverse करने के लिए is it clear up till here ma'am could you please explain this again okay i'll just repeat the concept again it says that the cost of my asset was 1000 और लाइफ कितनी थी मेरी एसेट की 10 इयर्स दैट मींस 100 का मेरा डेप्रीसिएशन लगेगा ठीक है लेट्स से अगर अभी कुछ भी नहीं हुआ इंपेयरमेंट नहीं हुई एंड वी आर स्टैंडिंग एट ईयर 3 ठीक है तो इन दैट केस मेरी क्या नेट बुक वैल्यू होगी 3 साल हो चुके हैं सो so 100 का पर ईयर डेप्रीसिएशन लग रहा है तो 3 साल का 300 लगेगा तो 1000 minus 300 700 विल बी माय कैरिंग वैल्यू ऑफ द एसेट अब यहाँ पर I said कि अगर मेरी recoverable amount let's say year one में कुछ हुआ जिसकी वजह से मेरी recoverable amount six thirty है and यहाँ पे मेरी net book value कितनी थी nine hundred right तो carrying value अगर मेरी ज़्यादा होती है recoverable amount से तो that means there is an impairment that would have happened so there was an impairment of two seventy dollars ठीक है तो in that case impairment होती है तो हम लोग entry के पास करते हैं PNL to asset two seventy की मैंने pass कर second year में कुछ नहीं हुआ third year में कुछ नहीं हुआ तो अब यहाँ तक क्या चल रहा था? जब भी हम लोग अपने एसेट को इंपेयर करेंगे, यानी कि अब मैंने अपनी एसओएफपी के अंदर 630 पे एसेट को रिकॉर्ड करा होगा, तो यानी कि डेप्रीसिएशन भी मुझे अब इस रिवाइज्ड अमाउंट पे चार्ज करना पड़ेगा। व्हाट इस द रिमेनिंग लाइफ नाउ? 10 इयर्स ओरिजिनल थी, थर्ड ईयर में 70 चार्ज हुई तो अब मेरी नेट बुक वैल्यू कितनी बन गई 490 इस पॉइंट इन टाइम पे हमने इंपेयरमेंट टेस्टिंग देयर वाज सम रीजन जिसकी वजह से इंपेयरमेंट टेस्टिंग करी और रिकवरेबल अमाउंट हमारा निकला 580 का यहां पर मेरा रिकवरेबल अमाउंट ज्यादा है यानी कि आई इंपेयरमेंट नहीं हुई है बल्कि मेरे एसेट की वैल्यू बढ़ गई है अब पास्ट में अगर मैंने कोई इंपेयरमेंट चार्ज कर रखी है नुकसान बुक करा है और जबकि अब मेरा जो है वो एक्चुअल में नहीं है लॉस तो हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं इंपेयरमेंट को रिवर्स कर सकते हैं लेकिन किस एक्सटेंट तक उसी एक्सटेंट तक जितने की मेरी एसेट की वैल्यू है 
and what is the value 700 agar aaj ki date mein if there was no impairment that was charged mere asset ki value 700 dollar hoti to 700 dollar tak ka acceptable hai beyond that you cannot do it which is why i have prepared this ki hum log kya karenge recoverable amount kitna 580 ka hai 490 pe hum khade the to hum log 490 se 580 tak ja sakte hai lekin hum log 700 ke beyond nahi ja sakte because fir to ye ho jayega na ki hum log cost se bhi upar ja rahe hain asset ki and that is not possible abhi main wahi example dene wali yahan tak clear hai online students can you give me a confirmation if it is clear up till here yes ma'am okay now let's take an example that we are standing at 490 and your limit is how much 700 dollars up till here it is clear let's say your recoverable amount is 800 dollars in that case what do you think can we reverse the impairment up to the limit we can but beyond that we will not so in that case what will be the journal entry that will be passed what is the difference between the two 210 till here we can reverse it so what will be the entry passed i said to pnl for 210 remaining we cannot cross this boundary okay so whatever amount is beyond that we cannot do anything about it okay but till here we can cancel it and we have done that is it clear up till here both the cases this was it about this concept then we have another one um, have you all written or are you guys writing do you want me to scroll it up it would have been better if you were writing Both. 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 ठीक है अब आप बोलोगे कि यार 60 का तो यहां पे यानी कि हमने ज्यादा नुकसान बुक कर रखा है उसका एक ओके फॉर 60 डॉलर्स इफ यू सी इफ 210 इज द लिमिट ओवर हियर फॉर 60 डॉलर्स यू विल से दैट वी हैव बुकड मोर एक्सपेंस बट वी हैव इट बिकॉज़ अगर आप डिप्रीसिएशन देखोगे 30 डॉलर्स यहां पे कम हुआ 30 डॉलर्स यहां पे कम हुआ तो नेट इफेक्ट आपका नलिफाई हो ही जाता है क्योंकि 30 डॉलर्स का आपने बेनिफिट यहां पर भी तो उठाया हुआ देखा जाए तो अगर आपका डिप्रेसिएशन कम होगा तो 30 डॉलर से प्रॉफिट भी तो बढ़ेगा तो वो बेनिफिट आप ऑलरेडी ले चुके हो ठीक है तो नेट इफेक्ट इज जीरो क्लियर है हम्म तो दो साल तो है ना 60 का तो 90 से नहीं चलेगा 60 का तो डिफरेंस है 270 का आपने पास्ट में इंपेयरमेंट बुक करा है 210 मौन ज्यादा हो गया जैसे 800 तब आपने क्या बताया तब तालीम पर रिकवरेबल अमाउंट ज्यादा बताया था लिमिट क्या थी मेरी 700 की लिमिट थी हां तो हम लोग सिर्फ 700 तक का रिवर्स कर सकते हैं उसके बियॉन्ड हम कुछ नहीं करेंगे उसके बियॉन्ड ऐसे ही पड़ जाएंगे ठीक है क्योंकि हम एसेट को उसकी कॉस्ट से ज्यादा थोड़ी रिकॉर्ड कर लेंगे ओके क्लियर है यहां तक यस लक्ष्य यहां तक ठीक है देखो, I just said impairment अभी तक कितने की चार्ज हुई है 270 की। तो his doubt was कि मैम हमने impairment जो reverse करी है, उसकी limit तो बस 210 है। तो यानी कि ये तो 60 का ज़्यादा नुकसान नहीं हो गया। समझ रहे हो? तो कैसे हुआ नुकसान ज़्यादा? क्योंकि हम लोगों ने depreciation original कितनी होती थी? 100 चार्ज होती थी। जिसमें 90 आया। तो उसके अंदर जितने का हर यार जितने की रिकवरेबल अमाउंट है उतने का ही तो आप इंपेयरमेंट रिवर्स करोगे उससे एक्स्ट्रा कैसे रिवर्स कर लो इन फ्यूचर कुछ होगा तो आप कर देना रिवर्स ठीक है यहां तक क्लियर है जॉट डाउन कर लो प्लीज
जो भी आपके एसेट की जैसे अभी इस पॉइंट इन टाइम पे 580 हो गई थी तो 550 दिखा होगा अब उसके हिसाब से ठीक है हां जी अगर नेक्स्ट ईयर दिस हैपेंस अगेन देन वी हैव द रिकवरेबल अमाउंट वी हैव लेफ्ट इज 700 minus 210 दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी रिकवर्ड द लिमिट हैज डिक्रीज्ड इन दैट केस जो आपकी लिमिट होगी पहले कितनी थी 270 थी है ना ऐसी थी ना ये हां 270 का इंपेयरमेंट हो रखा है 90 आपने ऑलरेडी कर लिया तो जो रिमेनिंग बैलेंस होगा सिर्फ उतने तक आप कर सकते हो लेकिन प्रोवाइडेड इफ यू सी कि आपका जो नेट बुक वैल्यू है और द एसेट लेट्स से अगर हम इसी एग्जांपल को आगे कंटिन्यू फॉरवर्ड करते हैं कैरी फॉरवर्ड करते हैं लेट्स से ईयर 3 में हमारी जो है नेट बुक वैल्यू अगर कुछ नहीं हुआ तो 700 रहती ठीक है 3 से अब जा रहे हैं 4 पे 4 पे रिकवरेबल अमाउंट मेरी हो गई कितनी ले बताओ 620 ले लेते हैं चलो ठीक है ज्यादा का तो ले लिया ना एग्जांपल 620 ले लेते हैं रिकवरेबल अमाउंट और ईयर 3 पे मेरी नेट बुक वैल्यू कितनी हो गई थी अब आपका वो 680 हो गई थी ना आई थिंक हां मतलब ओरिजिनल बुक में हम तो 700 दे और तो 700 लेंगे तो आपको इंपेयरमेंट पर वो तो रिकवरेबल अमाउंट रिकवर हां जी रिकवरेबल अमाउंट लिमिट 700 लिमिट थी 700 तो लिमिट थी ये रिकवरेबल अमाउंट की बात कर रही हूं रिकवरेबल अमाउंट 700 अभी लेके देखते हैं रुक जाओ एग्जांपल बन रहा है ना अभी तो नेट बुक वैल्यू कितनी है हमारी 580 की है ठीक है 580 की था ना ऊपर अमाउंट रिकवर का 580 की वैल्यू होगी अब लेट्स से डिप्रीसिएशन जो है हमारा कितने का लगेगा कितने साल रह गए व्हाट इज द रिमेनिंग लाइफ पॉइंट में निकले आप तो 560 कर दूं मैं इसको अब बताओ कितना डेप्रीसिएशन है डेप्रीसिएशन ड्यूरिंग द ईयर कितना होगा 80 डॉलर्स ठीक है अब मेरी यहां पे नेट बुक वैल्यू कितनी है 480 480 मेरे रिकवरेबल अमाउंट इज मोर ठीक है इफ देयर वुड हैव बीन नो इंपेयरमेंट तो मैं आज ईयर 4 पे कितने पे खड़ी होती 600 पे खड़े होते हम लोग तो अब मेरी लिमिट क्या हो गई 600 हो गई है हजार का मेरा एसेट था 100 पे हर साल डिप्रीशिएट हो रहा है 4 साल डिप्रीशिएट हुआ तो कितने 400 का डिप्रीसिएशन लगा होगा तो अब कितने की वैल्यू बची 600 अब मेरी लिमिट कितनी हो गई है 600 की हो गई ठीक है लिमिट ही चेंज हो जाएगी आपकी तो तो अब अगर 600 की लिमिट है मेरी एंड लेट्स से नेट बुक वैल्यू कितनी थी 4 80 480 थी और मेरी वो कितनी है रिकवरेबल अमाउंट 700 है तो मैं तो सिर्फ 600 तक आ सकती हूं ना उससे ऊपर थोड़ी जा सकते हैं मेरे जो बाउंड्रीज कुछ है तो हमें बाउंड्रीज मेंटेन करके रखनी पड़ेगी तो हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं सिर्फ इतने तक का वो कर सकते हैं रिवर्स कर सकते हैं यस इज इट क्लियर नाउ मैम सो तो जैसे रीवैल्यूएशन में अपन उसमें से पहले आरआर में से रिवर्स कर देते हम लोग कैंसिल आउट करते थे अब देखो जो रिवर्सल है आप एक बात बताओ आपका लॉस कितने का था 270 का पहले आपने 90 का कर लिया अब आपका कितना हो रहा है आई थिंक 120 हो रहा है इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग तो दैट इज स्टिल नॉट इंक्रीजिंग द लॉस राइट इसके बियॉन्ड नहीं आप जा सकते बिल्कुल रिवर्सल में 270 इज द लिमिट यू आर नॉट क्रॉसिंग दैट उसके अंदर हो रहा है इसलिए हम ये सारी चीजें कर पा रहे अगर 270 क्रॉस हो गया एंड फिर अगर अमाउंट बढ़ रहा है तो इन दैट केस हम लोग क्या मानेंगे कि इंपेयरमेंट हुई ही नहीं है टेस्टिंग के बाद देयर इज आल्सो पॉसिबिलिटी कि इंपेयरमेंट ना हुई हो यहां पर हो रखी थी इसलिए वी आर रिवर्सिंग इट हुई नहीं तो फिर क्यों कर कुछ करोगे अच्छा मतलब अगर ये और 60 हो जाता है अगले साल में तो उसके बाद फिर इंपेयरमेंट अगर समझ लो 270 की लिमिट हो चुकी है आपकी रिवर्स कर दी उसके बाद अगर जो है रिकवरेबल अमाउंट बढ़ रहा है तो दैट मींस इंपेयरमेंट हुई ही नहीं है कुछ तो आप रिवर्स क्या करोगे सिंपल ठीक है इज इट क्लियर नाउ मैम वेयर डिड 270 केम फ्रॉम 270 इनिशियली आपने इंपेयरमेंट जो चार्ज करी थी ना दिस लिमिट ओके ठीक है तो इससे ऊपर हम लोग नहीं जा सकते बस ओके थैंक यू 
वो फिर क्वेश्चन उसके अकॉर्डिंग बन जाएगा वो तो फिर हो गया ना कि हम लोग केस बस बढ़ाई जा रहे हैं अपने कन्वीनियंस के अकॉर्डिंग ठीक है तब तक टाइम जस्ट मेकिंग द न्यू हाउ मच टाइम डू वी हैव इट इज सिक्स टेन आई थिंक वी कैन डू वन क्वेश्चन हाँ जी हो जाएगा बैलेंस शीट में आपका वो अमाउंट जाएगा जिस पे जैसे एग्जाम्पल वन के अंदर लास्ट एग्जाम्पल के अंदर देखो यहाँ पर मेरा बैलेंस शीट में ईयर वन में क्या जाएगा अब अमाउंट जो रिकवरेबल अमाउंट होगा सिंस इम्पेयरमेंट होती है अब तो सिक्स थर्टी पे हम लोग रिकॉर्ड करेंगे सिक्स थर्टी फिर फाइव सिक्सटी फिर फोर नाइनटी ठीक है अब इस पे होगा अब यहाँ पर हम लोग इम्पेयरमेंट रिवर्स कर रहे हैं तो इन दैट केस फाइव एटी तो हमारी लिमिट जो थी उससे ऊपर नहीं जा सकते हाँ डेट वाज बेड This is the last concept of this accounting standard as per your syllabus, and that is cash generating units. Cash generating units simply means कि अगर यहाँ पर हम लोग example लेते हैं कि group of assets जो है it is sometimes it is not even possible for us to calculate कि हमारा जो asset है हमें कितना generate करके दे रहा है कितना revenue generate कितना cash flow हम लोग उसकी वजह से independent cash flow वो कर रहे हैं earn कर पा रहे हैं we are not able when able to calculate that let's just take example of this class only let's say you might be paying individual fees i'm not aware about so let's say you are paying 20000 for the subject okay so i think you might be 10 or 15 or 20 students let's say you are 20 students everyone is paying 10000 okay so what is the total amount for that फैसिलिटीड राइट and these are the costs that the institute will be incurring right so can the institute actually whenever they are charging you do they ask you do they tell you the fees for the subject or do they tell you that this much amount of uh, cost we are charging for ac for, for you guys because you will be sitting in this class this is the amount we will be charging for screen that doesn't happen so it is not possible at times we are earning the revenue we are generating cash flows but it is not possible to split the cost so in that case it is known as cash generating units and in that case we consider the assets together okay okay let's take another example uh let's say if it is a bus route okay ya fir metro route to be honest okay so metro hum log whenever we travel in delhi red line se 
हम लोग जो है इंटरसेक्शन आया पिंक लाइन के लिए ठीक है वी चेंज टू पिंक लाइन एंड देन वी वो ट्रेवलिंग अगेन एंड देन आया ग्रीन लाइन का इंटरसेक्शन फिर हमने ग्रीन में चेंज कर लिया ऐसे करके तो क्या मेट्रो वाले के लिए पॉसिबल हो पाएगा कि रेड लाइन का रेवेन्यू कितना है पिंक लाइन का कितना है ग्रीन लाइन का कितना इंडिविजुअली निकालो नो वाई बिकॉज द इंटरसेक्शन इज अवेलेबल हमने एक बार कार्ड टैप करा हम लोग तो एंड में टैप करेंगे तो वो इंडिविजुअली निकालना वुड इन बी पॉसिबल सो दैट इज अ कैश जनरेटिंग यूनिट तो इन दैट केस हम लोग स्मॉलेस्ट ग्रुप्स को कब जब बाइफकेट नहीं कर सकते इंडिपेंडेंट कैश फ्लो वट एवर इट इज ओपनिंग तो इन दैट केस वी टेक इट वी क्लब इट टूगेदर एंड वी चार्ज इम्पेयरमेंट ऑन दैट ग्रुप ऑफ एस ठीक है is it clear making sense to you all so let's do a practical example of this आर एज रिकवरेबल अमाउंट ओके CDU is cash generating. Okay. So in this example, if we calculate the total carrying value, what is it? Forty. Forty-two thousand. This is the total carrying value of the CDU that we have. and what is the recoverable amount 33000 so is there any impairment that is happening impairment of dollar 9000 in total and it says that the recoverable amount of the van is 4500 what was the carrying value 5000 that means during the year 500 is the impairment that would have been charged on on this van Is is it true? Is it okay up till here? On cash, can there be an impairment that can be charged on cash? क्योंकि cash जो आपके पास है वो तो वही रहेगा the value wouldn't change, so it will be two thousand itself. ठीक है? अरे यार तो फोन पे ये सही चोरी हो गया तो that's that's another issue. ठीक है? तो अब यहाँ पर क्या हुआ? हम लोगों ने 500 तो ऑलरेडी वैन में डाल दिया ठीक है तो हाउ मच आर वी लेफ्ट विद 8500, ठीक है अब आई एम राइटिंग समथिंग बिफोर आई एक्सप्लेन
ठीक है जी करें अब देखो तो यहाँ पर अब क्या था कि फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी डिड वॉज कैश पे इम्पेयरमेंट लगती नहीं है एंड वैन का वी वो गिवन रिकवरीबल अमाउंट दैट वॉज फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर तो देर वॉज एन ऑब्वियस इम्पेयरमेंट दैट हैज है रीजन बींग दैट द कैरियंग अमाउंट ऑफ वैन वॉज हाउ मच फाइव थाउजेंड डॉलर एंड इट हैज रिड्यूज टू फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड दैट मीन देर वॉज फाइव हंड्रेड लॉस दैट वॉज इन कॉर्ड सो वेन एवर वी आर एलोकेटिंग इम्पेयरमेंट इन एनी सी जी यू फर्स्ट थिंग इज इफ देर इज एनी ऑब्वियस इम्पेयरमेंट दैट इज हैपनिंग इन केस ऑफ वैन इट हैपन दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ वैन हैज डिक्रीज फ्रॉम फाइव थाउजेंड डॉलर टू फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड सो देर वॉज एन ऑब्वियस इम्पेयरमेंट ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर दैट वॉज गिवन टू यू इन द क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ सेकेंड थिंग इज जो भी इम्पेयरमेंट का अमाउंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हैड इम्पेयरमेंट ऑफ नाइन थाउजेंड तो फाइव हंड्रेड हमने डिडक्ट कर दिया हमारे पास कितना बचा एटी फाइव हंड्रेड एटी फाइव हंड्रेड बचा अब क्या होता है इम्पेयरमेंट होने की वजह से बिकॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ माई सी जी यू इज फॉलोइंग तो अकाउंटिंग स्टैंड बोल बोलता है कि आपकी गुडविल भी रिड्यूज होगी तो पहली चीज हम लोग राइट ऑफ क्या करते हैं इम्पेयरमेंट जो भी ऑब्वियस जिस एसेट पे हुई है जो एसेट डिस्ट्रॉय हुआ उस पर सेकेंड चीज वील बी राइटिंग ऑफ आर गुडविल अगर कुछ रिमेनिंग बचेगा उसको प्रोराटा बेसिस पे डाल देंगे दीज आर द स्टेप्स दैट वी फॉलो अब इम्पेयरमेंट कितने की बची थी एटी फाइव हंड्रेड की ठीक है गुडविल कितने की है पांच हजार की इसको मैं पूरा राइट ऑफ कर सकती हूँ इसमें से पूरा राइट ऑफ कर दिया तो अब मेरी गुडविल खत्म हो गई बिल्कुल अब एटी फाइव हंड्रेड से इफ आई डिडक्ट फाइव थाउजेंड दैट मीन हाउ मच आर माई लेफ्ट विद थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर सो ना दिस थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर विल बी स्प्लिट बिटवीन प्लांट एंड बिल्डिंग बिकॉज दीज आर दू रिमेनिंग एसेट्स दैट आई है on pro rata basis so for plant what is the carrying amount that i have 10000 10000 on building what is the amount that i have 20000 dollars these are the carrying amounts that are given to you in the question theek hai yahi maine upar se copy paste kare this is our basis are agar mere ko pro rata basis pe dalna hai to kya kar denge total kitna hai 30000 दस प्लस बीस तीस हजार हो गया टोटल ठीक है कितने अमाउंट को डालना है थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड को ठीक है तो कितना कितना स्प्लिट हो गया वॉट इज दउंट ऑफ इम्पेयरमेंट दैट वी आर गेटिंग थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई वन वन सिक्स सेवन एंड हियो ठीक है तो हमने थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड को क्या कर दिया प्लांट और बिल्डिंग में स्प्लिट कर दिया ठीक है तो वन वन सिक्स सेवन यहां पर आ गया प्लांट में जितने का कम हो और ये टू थ्री 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 ठीक है सो व्हाट इज द रिकवरेबल अमाउंट हियर व्हाट इज द बैलेंस हियर टेन थाउजेंड लेस वन वन सिक्स सेवन माइनस करके में से कितना आएगा और माइनस ट्रिपल अब इन सबको एक बार टोटल करके बताओ मेरे को कितनी आ रही है रिकवरी क्वेश्चन अगेन और क्वेश्चन में हमें कितनी गिवन थी थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड तो इससे आपका आंसर क्रॉस चेक हो जाएगा कि आपने सही कर समझ गए तो हम वेन वी स्टार्ट ऑफ विद क्वेश्चन वट वो वी गिवन वी वो गिवन द कैरियंग वैल्यू ऑफ दी एसेट ठीक है देन हमें बोला रिकवरेबल अमाउंट वैन का इतना है और रिकवरेबल अमाउंट सी जी यू का थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड है ठीक है तो हमारे कैरियंग वैल्यू टोटल क्या था सी जी यू का फोर्टी टू थाउजेंड एंड द रिकवरेबल अमाउंट वॉज हाउ मच थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड सो दैट मीन्स देर वॉज एन एम्पेयरमेंट ऑफ नाइन थाउजेंड दैट हैज है ठीक है अब क्वेश्चन हमें ऑलरेडी वैन का बोल रखा है कि फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड का रिकवरेबल अमाउंट है लैंड सॉरी वैन हमारे पास कितने की थी पांच हजार की एग्जिस्ट कर रही थी और फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड उसकी वैल्यू बची यानी कि पांच सौ डॉलर का मेरे पास वैन पे क्या हुआ होगा इम्पेयरमेंट चार्ज हुआ ठीक है तो वैन तो मैं फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड पे ले आई कैश पे हम इम्पेयरमेंट चार्ज करेंगे नहीं बिकॉज कैश तो वैसे का वैसे ही रहेगा अब रूल क्या होता है वट आर द स्टेप्स जिसपे ऑब्वियस इम्पेयरमेंट लग रही है वो करो फिर जो बच रहा है उसको किस पे करो गुडविल को राइट ऑफ करो क्योंकि इम्पेयरमेंट हो रही है तो जो गुडविल है वो भी डिक्रीज होगी 
गुडविल राइटअप करने के बाद भी अगर कुछ बच रहा है तो उसको प्रोग्राटा बेसिस पे डालो तो गुडविल कितने की थी पांच हजार की हमारे पास बच कितना रहा था एटी फाइव हंड्रेड तो पांच हजार में इसमें डाल सकती हूँ ये नहीं लोग है मेरे पास अब जो थर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड रिमेनिंग बचा मेरे पास उसको हम प्रोराटा बेसिस पे हमने डाला एंड दीज आर द रिकवरेबल अमाउंट दैट वी गॉट एंड इट इज द टोटल इज कमिंग आउट टू बी थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड एंड दैट वॉज ऑलरेडी गिवन इन द्वेश्चन दैट मीन हमने क्वेश्चन ठीक करा ठीक है दिस हाउ यू चेक कैश जनरेटिंग यूनिट जो मैंने समझाई थी कॉन्सेप्ट की आप इंडिविजुअल में नहीं कर सकते स्मॉल ग्रुप में कोई कर सकते क्लियर है ओके वी हैव अनदर क्वेश्चन फॉर यू गाइस टू डू इट नाउ आई एम राइटिंग द क्वेश्चन सीवीएस कैरिंग वैल्यू ठीक है Hmm. I have you all written the question?
Are you all done? Can we discuss? Now, see. Carrying value of the asset is how much? Fifty-seven thousand. And what is the recoverable amount? Forty-eight thousand. So, what is the amount of impairment? Impairment is nine thousand. Is there any obvious impairment given in the question? Where is given? मैंने पेटेंट को मशीनरी चेंज करा है हाँ इसमें कहाँ की बने पेट मतलब मशीनरी जो है टेन थाउजेंड की है फेयर वैल्यू दी मशीनरी इस हाउ मच ट्वेल्थ थाउजेंड सो हाउ इस देर एन इम्पेयरमेंट कॉस्ट मॉडल यूज़ कर रहे हैं हम लोग पहली चीज़ ठीक है ठीक है सो हाँ मैंने बस नाम चेंज करा है माउंट नहीं चे� ठीक है, so impairment जो है कितनी है dollar nine thousand की है, right? क्या आज हमारे impair होता है? नहीं, तो क्या आज आज इट्स आ जाएगा four thousand का, ठीक है? अब हमारे पास goodwill जो है, impairment कितने की हुई है? नौ हजार की, goodwill write off करते हैं, कितने की goodwill write off हो जाएगी? तीन हजार की पूरी हो जाएगी, तो goodwill खत्म। अब कितने बचे? ये left with six thousand अब six thousand को हमें क्या करना है pro rata basis पे डालना है तो pro rata पे आप लोगों ने डाल लिया होगा कितना आ रहा है बताओ pro rata पे कैसे डालेंगे एक तो एक का तो मैं बताई थी at least काये building पच्चीस हजार है total was how much बताओ भाई जिन लोगों ने करा था forty three thousand sorry forty और fifty forty Forty everyone right? Okay, forty thousand into how much? Six thousand. Then we have plant and everything. कितना कितना आ रहा है amount अब बताओ? Three seven five zero for building. Okay. Two two five zero for plant. मशीनरी आप लोगों ने ये चीज़ पकड़ ली आई थॉट कि यू वुड यू वुड हैव कैलकुलेटेड दैट ठीक है तो कितना कितना आ रहा है अमाउंट बाय इस देर नो इम्पेयरमेंट ऑफ़ मशीनरी क्योंकि हम इम्पेयरमेंट मतलब कि वैल्यू कम होना हमारी मशीनरी कितने की है दस हजार की है उसकी वैल्यू तो बारह ह मशीनरी पे कुछ चार्ज नहीं हो, ठीक है? तो अब अमाउंट कितना आ रहा है? Twenty one two fifty. Twelve seven fifty. Ten thousand. Twelve thousand. यहाँ तो ten thousand आज इट इस रहेगा. And what is the total? Forty eight thousand. Forty eight thousand. That means we did correct. Clear है यहाँ तक? बोलो. जो हम C G O होता है, उसमें वो ऐसे कैश का अमाउंट नहीं भी नहीं करना चाहिए. कैरिंग का माउंट नहीं वो पूरा एसेट के अंदर पूरा पैकेट में इंक्लूड होता है पैकेट में कैश तो हम अलग से वो लेते हैं ना वो सीज़ू में कैसा देखो हम लोग कैरिंग वैल्यू जो भी हमारे टोटल एसेट होता है हम टोटल एसेट को कंसीडर करते हैं विद दी रिकवरेबल मोड देखो हमने जो कैरिंग वैल्यू निकाली उसके अंदर हमने कैश इं 
the rule is that ki jo bhi jo hamara cg hota hai jo hamara asset hota hai hum pure total asset pe lete hain consider karte hain impairment and not just particular assets arun cash aane do chahiye cg mein cg bol rahe hain matlab allocate nahi kar pa rahe exactly ye baat bilkul theek hai cash owners ko nahi cash owners ko cash value ideally yes your point is absolutely right is this ke andar ki cash pe to tabhi hum log cash pe kuch impairment wagera nahi kar rahe usko side mein rakh rahe hain लेकिन जब हम लोग सीडियो का कॉन्सेप्ट लगाते हैं तो उस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम पे हम कैरिंग वैल्यू निकालने के लिए उसको यूज करते हैं पर इंपेयरमेंट जब वो कंपेयर कर रहे हैं तो वैसे नहीं होना चाहिए कैश को हटा के जो उसका कैरिंग वैल्यू बन रहा है उसको हम उससे कंपेयर करेंगे जो हमने कैरिंग वैल्यू रिकॉर्ड ये नहीं करते ये नहीं करते आई डोंट ये नहीं करते अलाउड नहीं क्या नहीं करते ही सेइंग ही कैश को यहां से क्यों नहीं हटाया कैरिंग वैल्यू से हां वो इंक्लूड होगा बट वैसे हमने कैश को सेपरेट आउट कर दिया ठीक है पूरे एसेट के पैकेट को आप लोग करोगे अब आई हैव टू मोर क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर होमवर्क ऑब्वियसली और मे बी नॉट होमवर्क बिकॉज़ डू वन थिंग आई विल जस्ट टेल यू आई थिंक इट्स फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन 23 टिल 30 देयर माइट बी सम क्वेश्चंस जो इंपेयरमेंट से रिलेटेड ना हो सो फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन 23 टिल 30 from the exam kit you have to try is it okay you just have to try i'll discuss these questions in the yeah. class theek hai but uh, there's a possibility ki 30 now matlab usse kam hi ho questions but as far as i know 22 through, uh, 23 till 30 mein hi impairment concept tested hai that is is 36 jo bhi aapka related hoga you just have to do that leave everything it could be up to theek hai is it clear up till here any doubts okay i'll actually save these notes and share with you because some of you have not actually written down things but next class say i'll not be writing i'll not be saving the file down so you have to write हाँ जी स्टैंडर्ड खत्म मेन स्टैंडर्ड इफ यू वांट टू यू कैन डेफिनेटली स्टडी कैपिटल एंड स्टडी ठीक है सो आई सी यू गाइस इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास ओके